Okay. All right, I'm going to call the meeting of the Charlton Board of Selectmen to order. Today is September 8th, 2020. It is 6.33 p.m. And I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight. For those tuning in, thank you for joining us. I will proceed by reading the agenda for this evening. Again, it's September 8th, 634 now, and this is the meeting of the Charlotte Board of Selectmen. First order of business will be to approve the regular minutes of August 25th, 2020. Then we'll move on to community relations, announcements, and open forum. Follow, following, we will have appointments and resignation. We have an appointment of a full-time patrolman, appointment of historical commission, appointment medium equipment operator, and a notice of retirement for the police chief. Scheduled appointments at 645. We have a Weimar dangerous dog hearing, followed by new business, old business. Under old business, we have town council proposals. Then we'll talk about the special town meeting and close the warrant review draft special town meeting requests. Following that, we will have the Board of Selectmen Committee reports, which the Public Safety Building Capital Campaign Steering Committee will be providing a very brief update. Following that, we have the Board of Selectmen Policy Review, Town Administrator Report, other business unknown at the time of posting. Then we will have our next meeting announcements, which I will read right now. We have the Board of Selectmen and FinCon, which will be meeting on Wednesday, September 16th, to finalize the special town meeting warrant articles. And the Board of Selectmen regular meeting will be September 22nd, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. And tonight we do have an executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation, BGG, um, if an opening, if open meeting may have detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and chair so declares and to reconvene to open session for any other business if needed and then to adjourn. Are you taking my job? Sorry. Oh, you'll have a chance to do that later. <laughs> All right, so first order of business. Do we have um, anyone want to make a motion to approve the minutes? Sure, sure. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of August 25th. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. It's unanimous. Thank you. Next, we have community relations, announcements, and open forum. So the first thing I will do is read the announcements. So there's going to be a has household hazardous waste and electronics collection day, Saturday, September 26, 2020, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Casella Waste Services Facility, 165 Barefoot Road in Southbridge, Mass. Please be prepared to unload your vehicle. Mask or face covering must be worn. Proof of residency is required. Then the next and final announcement is from the U.S. Census Bureau. Census takers are now visiting households across the nation that have not yet responded. Understandably, some households that have already responded have expressed confusion over why they too are being visited. These visits are part of our efforts to, to be absolutely sure that we count everyone. If you get a visit and you've already responded, please be patient and kind and answer the census takers questions. Please visit census.gov for more information. And that concludes our announcements for this evening. I will now uh, go to open forum where I know we have Sabrina <laughs> Webb. <laughs> we have a big check. Go figure it yeah, out. <laughs> Sabrina, if you want to come on up. And yeah. we do need someone like, to take a, a photo, I, I believe. Yes. Yes. Mary, can take a picture. Unless you want to be, be, be actually in the picture. No, no. Sabrina, do you want to 
want to, if you want to sit and just talk for a second, and I'll come, I'll come over there in a minute. But just tell us a little bit about what you're doing. First, of course, welcome. <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you very much for having me this evening. So my name is Sabrina Webb, and I um, run the Charleston Cornerstone Bank office. And on behalf of the bank, it's my pleasure to present this check for twenty five hundred dollars to the Public Safety Building Capital Campaign Committee uh, towards their fundraising efforts. And um, as a resident in town, I. Um, I'm very appreciative of everything that they have put forth. I know uh, it's a lot uh, doing the um, nonprofit work. It's a lot. Um, so thank you very much for that, and um, best of luck in your efforts. All right. And then that's it. Yeah. And I guess I'm the only one. Did you? Are you? Yeah. Do you need anyone else? Are you good? I am fine. Unless if you want to come up. No, I am fine. Okay. I'm paying the boat. I am good. <laughs> I am fortunate to serve as liaison on that particular committee. So on their behalf, because I don't think we have anyone here. Tonight, you don't see any committee members out there, do you, Andrew? Mm, I don't. Because I know we're yeah, we have this so. COVID. Maybe we're keeping people. Yeah. But thank you. Please yeah. extend thank you, and of course you'll be getting a formal <laughs> thank you very soon. No, thank you, guys. Thank I you. Also, made some things. And I'd shake your hand, but hey. Hey, I know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Sabrina. Have a great evening. Thank you as well. That's our excuse for like our for the for the for the like, you know, We just can't shake hands. <laughs> Seriously, Sabrina. Thanks again. Elbows. <laughs> All right, and now what I will do is if there's anyone from the public who would like to speak, um, that now would be the time. Mary, do we happen to know if anyone out there is here for general purposes? Mary, I'm so sorry in advance all that. <laughs> Mary, I'm really glad you came tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna need little signs to hold up. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you for checking there. I appreciate that. All right, I'm, I'm not missing anything. Ready to move no, on? I'm All right, good. so we're moving on. Oh, we're doing it again. No, actually, we're good. We're right on schedule. So we're moving down to appointments and resignation. The first order of business is appointment, full time patrolman. Andrew? Attaches a letter from Police Chief Maxfield stating that they currently have an opening for a full time patrolman due to Officer Michael McGrath's retirement. After posting, the, the job as required and conducting interviews with the department's command staff. They've selected Anthony Francis Gribbins to fill this vacant position. Mr. Gribbins is currently employed by the Holden Police Department and has been there since May of 2003. Prior to working in Holden, he was a dispatcher with the Shrewsbury Police Department and was an intermittent police officer with the OCAM Police Department. Mr. Gribbins is a graduate of the Massachusetts Basic Recruit Academy in Boylston and requires no FTO training. Chief Maxfield would recommend <coughs> that Anthony Francis Gribbins be appointed to the position of patrolman and his start date would be contingent upon the su successful completion of the required physical and psychological exams and the required lateral transfer paperwork to civil service. I would agree with Chief Maxfield and recommend that the board make the appointment. I would move to make the appointment as recommended by Chief Maxfield for the terms specified. Definitely a second for discussion. We have a first a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, well, only that I'd love to hear from the chief and, and our <coughs> hopefully soon to be new officer. And yes, so, you talk with a mask on. We've, yes, uh, please. We've um, <laughs> advertised this position for almost a year. Uh, we haven't found the right candidate be a good fit for the department. Uh, until Anthony walked through the door, uh, he's a motivated individual. He has a great work record, uh, highly educated, and we're excited to have him. Thank you. Is, is there anything you'd like to say? No, I just look forward to working here and uh, appreciate the opportunity. All right, well, I guess now we thank can make you. it. Well, thank you. And again, welcome. And I guess we can make it official. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome, Officer. Yes, Unanimous. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. I just feel like we need to ask more just because they come all the way here just for that. <laughs> <laughs> Was it an opportunity to do email? All right. Thank you again. All right. So moving on to our second number two yep. historical commission appointment. Andrew? Attaches a request from Michael Karen, chairman of the Historical Commission, asking the board to appoint Susan Hall to the commission. The commission has been in need of members, and I'd suggest that the board make the appointment. The term of appointment would be until June 30, 2023. 
with thanks to Ms. Hall for volunteering, I'd like to uh, make a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? All right. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries. It's unanimous. All right. Moving on, we're to the medium equipment operator appointment. Andrew. Three interviews were held for the position of medium equipment operator for the DPW by Superintendent Jerry Foskett, Highway Foreman Mark Oliver, and Human Resources Director Lynn Dye. They are recommending the board appoint Joseph Ryapel as the medium equipment operator. This position is a full-time 40-hour position at the rate of $20.95 per hour with a tentative start date of September 21st, 2020. All right, so moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Oh, chair votes aye, motion carries it's unanimous. <clears throat> All right, next we have the notice of retirement, <clears throat> police chief. Attached is a notice from police chief Graham Maxfield of his intention to retire from his position effective at the close of business on October 3rd, 2020, after serving the town of Charlton for the past 23 years. I'd like to thank him for his service to the town and wish him well on his retirement. As the position of chief is no longer under civil service, the recruitment will be done under the personnel policies for the human resource department. The current policy states for recruitment, individuals shall be recruited from a geographic area as wide as necessary to assure obtaining qualified candidates, allowing for preference to residents if all considerations are equal. The official notice of a job vacancy shall be posted to the town administrator's office on a public bulletin board within the town of Charlton Town Hall for not less than seven days and shall be published in a newspaper local certification at least seven days prior to the close of the period specified for submission of an application. Publishing requirements shall be waived if the position is to be filled by the promotion of a present employee. Under promotions, any town employee may apply for any position posted under 25.6 above. Consideration will be given to knowledge, skills, experience, education, and seniority. Right. Madam Chair? Yes. You've already rejected your resignation. <laughs> <laughs> Got to tell you. <clears throat> I don't know how to answer that. I, I got to make sure how to play it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a fire. Whatever. It's 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 every bracelet for tomorrow. That's right. Uh, if I may, Chief, um, obviously I, I can't speak for the entire board, but uh, I think you know how I feel about you and the job you've done. And to the public who's not here, I can, I can tell you with absolute certainty that it would take this entire stack of paper, if not more to list Chief Maxfield's accomplishments as the Chief of Police for the Town of Charlton. We've had good chiefs time after time, no question, but I think we'd be hard pressed to fill Chief Maxfield's shoes looking at the lengthy list of achievements he's done in such a short span of time. And uh, you are going to be spoken this by, I believe, this everyone in this building and everyone in this team. And I personally wish you all the best. Chief, just to echo what David said, the reality is that you've been phenomenal, hands down. I mean, when we first met, I think it was a basic thing of just keep us out of the newspaper. And the reality was, you know, it was obviously tongue in cheek, but you've done so much for the community. And the reality is that anytime we've been in the paper, it's been for good things. It, between all the community service, the police programs that you've done. And the fact is, you keep us all safe at night with your team. Um, you have cultivated a staff that is really the sign of a true leader that at any time, again, people can call the police station from the dispatchers to the detectives, to the sergeants, lieutenant, regardless of what it is, they know it's gonna be taken care of. And the fact that you allow people to sleep well at night, I think maybe at least as chief, your greatest accomplishment. So, you know, not to cause problems for your possible successor or successors in the future, but again, as David mentioned, you're leaving some huge, huge uh, shoes to fill, but uh, I'm proud to A, have served with you, but I'm also proud to, to call you my friend. So you're gonna be missed. Anyone else have any comments? I won't give you a second speech though. <laughs> <laughs>
don't want to hear me. <laughs> Chief, I appreciate everything you've done for the town over the years. I was, I, I, if I got here five minutes earlier, I was going to look for a senior center menu to hand you. I could probably find one if you hang around later. But thanks again. You've done a great job. And finally, I too want to thank you. I, you know, I got to know you a little bit better when you were serving as the interim TA, and it uh, was wonderful working with you. But thank you for your service to this community, and we wish you the best of luck in, in the future. Is there anything you'd like to say? Yeah, just briefly, um, it's been a pleasure uh, to serve this town and, and all of you. And uh, I have great people in my building, uh, my lieutenant, my sergeants, <clears throat> you know, all powerful line individuals, my executive assistant, Bernard Jackson. Uh, so it's, although I speak for the department as a chief, you know, it's, it's really a, a collection of moving parts, and, and I have great people. You're in good hands. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You still have another month for parties, so I'll not worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> we have an official action that we take official action unless it's Yeah, I mean I right. suppose we have to accept the with regret I make a motion to accept the resignation or slash retirement would be a better way to phrase it. Sorry, I can't second that. Mm -hmm. oh. I second that. I, I, <laughs> so I second the acceptance of your resignation, but we have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Well done, Max. <laughs> motion carries this unanimous. Thank you again. Wish you all the best. Madam Chair, just a quick thing. Um, knowing that you know the Chief's last day is early October, and again, we can discuss more now, later, Harvard, because I, 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 don't, I don't want you to fall too far behind. Yeah. <laughs> we should probably discuss how we want to handle the chief's the successor. Mm -hmm. um, I have my own personal thoughts on it, but mm -hmm. I didn't know what others. I, I can go first, or how basically, however you'd like to handle, I would be happy to. That's the, you bring up a very good point, and I will defer to Andrew to let us know what we are required to do. And, uh, Andrew, it's really at the uh, discretion of the board how you want to handle it, as you put in the uh, the notice. You know, you um, you require a seven day posting if it was somebody outside, but. You know, somebody that's a successor, you could just assign. My my suggestion is you might want to take the next two, you know, the next uh, two weeks to post the position to see if anybody, you know, if there's uh, multiple internal candidates interested in the position, and then take action based off of what's submitted. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. uh, so if, while we're giving opinions, so one of the reasons we moved to remove the chief position from civil service in the first place, there were many reasons. One of them was this exact scenario. Should this scenario occur, we wouldn't have our hands tied that we would have a succession plan in place. Mm -hmm. I believe we do have a succession plan in place. Um, and I'd like to see us act on that tonight, which we have the authority to do. And one, again, that's one of the reasons we even set it up this way. Um, that would also enable the chief successor to have more than a week to actually work with the outgoing chief so we can have a smooth transition. So for me, I I would rather have that discussion right now. For the chair, I think that um, because like um, I think we need to figure out who really wants it. Um, every, I, I'm sure everybody has their ideas, and their heads a small town, but we probably should um, even. I know we don't have a meeting next week, right? Uh, we have with the finance committee. We have a joint meeting on the 16th. I mean, if we, but I, if we could take up the business. At hand. So if, if it's only one week, I think we should get we should get letters of interest for internally, um, and then appoint and, and have the formal vote and be prepared. And, and um, I don't think the whole board has a chance to look at resumes and backgrounds and everything else. We know we know people personally. We all do. We live in this town, um, and our our department is right after. But I think that if we again do it one week parties interested internally, they send the letter and then next week we can vote based on what we get in our research and, and any questions we may have to be answered. Because just to kind of do it cold um, by who we know and our friends and you know, it, it, I just think to have that information on us to make a, um, a decision based on the information presented. Okay, thank you. Steve? Um. 
it's hard, and I realize we're out of civil service right now, but we still have a human resource policy intact, right? Mm -hmm. We're working, we do not have an active human resource policy. We are technically in limbo, and we are following the guidelines still established by the planning board, by the, first, the previous personnel board and their policies, which say we do not have to either have any action taken or any delay <clears throat> for an internal promotion. We so, actually have the authority to do that right now. So just as, as long as we're acting within our authority, we don't, this, so this, this um, human resource document was printed, was made while we were in civil service. So Andrew can probably answer that, but we used to work with the personnel board and the personnel board's bylaws. We've been moving away from that to HR and HR procedures. And Andrew can correct me wrong, but to this date, nothing's been codified. So we're kind of in limbo. Nothing's been designated as an official policy. So we are still working off of the old bylaws as a guideline. And the old bylaws are still in line with the view of the town, admittedly, prior to the new board members. Um, but at that time, it was, and the reason we took this step was to be able to do this, like I mentioned this evening. Mm -hmm. And I understand that the Chief Minister Selectman may not have the experience with the members of our department. Chief Maxfield is right, there's not a bad officer in that group. I'm not sure. However, the reality is we have a succession plan, had a succession plan anyway. Someone who was ready to step into that role, who actually has already been the chief of this town, for all of the months, Chief Maxfield was the acting TA. So I know that many of us have had history to work with the people of that department for years, mm -hmm. some not so long. Um, but that being said, yeah, there are two parts to this. One is the appointment to a successor. And I will put this for you guys to consider, even if we wait a week. If we wait a, wait a week to make this decision, all you're deciding at that point is to make an offer. Then you have to enter into negotiations and work out a contract. That could take another week, as we've seen in the past. That could take two weeks. And then you wind up having a new chief with zero time sitting with an old chief to have a transition. Then it's just none or a week or less. Um, I think that has to be taken into account. Plus, the other part of this puzzle is if we did follow that plan, that succession plan that's been in place with the town in that department, um, regardless. If, if we did move the lieutenant up, we now have to start getting ready to have an assessment center or a test that we decide upon for a lieutenant promotion, because now we have to move somebody else. So there's more than one piece here. Mm -hmm. And I think also the longer we postpone that, also puts a delay and begin to evaluate assessment centers and begin the assessment center process. So if other officers, whether patrolmen or whether sergeants who want to apply for lieutenant positions, if we were to follow that succession plan, would have time to, to study or prepare and even get that done in time to make that transition. So I think that with all of those things in mind, um, I personally think it behooves the town to act this evening and at least make a decision because you still have to go through all those processes and that is going to take time. Okay, so I'd like to, I'd like to. We're well, just plugging an interim, right? So right now we just need, to, we just need an interim that's going to hold us over until a decision is made because we're gonna, we're gonna need resumes. We're gonna need to do it the right way. So I'm going to stop all conversation right now because we did not post. This is not on our agenda, and like we have said time and time again, if someone looked at this agenda right now, we did, it's not clear that we're going to be appointing anyone tonight. So because solely because of that, I think this should wait till the next, till to the eighth, sixteenth. Sorry, sixteenth uh, or. I mean, you might correct me if I'm wrong, but we're on here. I mean, it doesn't say we're, we're going to discuss that or do that or. I would just. If, I'm sorry, Kevin. No, I mean, interrupt. Go ahead. Okay. I was going to say, let me be as direct as I possibly can. And the reality is that the police are a paramilitary organization. And I mean that in the best possible way. There's a chain of command. We have a lieutenant, Lieutenant Dan Dowd, who's been with the force 20 plus years. He's a legit war hero. For all intents and purposes, when Chief Maxfield is not available for whatever reason, <laughs> i.e. he was interim TA, the lieutenant has been helping run the D department. Uh, when we think around morale, when we think around bringing people up in town, I can think of no better person than Lieutenant Dowd. And again, that's not taking away anything from the other officers. But there's a, there's a line of succession, a line of command. And I would just make the argument that even if we don't appoint tonight, that we basically move forward with, offer, with going into contract negotiations with 
or basically offering Lieutenant Dow the job. If he takes it, that's great. If he decides he'd rather do something else, that's okay too. But to at least start those start those negotiations. Um, the fact is that I again again just speaking of myself as as one of five, I, I don't see any reason why we would need to post, nor do we even need to wait to make that motion. But again, that's just me. Madam Chair, in response to your point, let's just say I, I my personal belief is that we could do this. It's under appointments and resignations, and I, to me, this would be fitting under the notice of retirement to take these actions. Well, Commissioner, I think we need to be careful on that. Um, I have, I have, I, I do not disagree with you at all, Bill. I just think that we need to follow a process, and we should, we can't. Unless you reached out to him already, which would probably not be good, um, to see if he really wants it, we need to. Why would that not be good? I, I mean, because you. Should... Okay, you know what? I don't like the way, direction this is going. No, so you, here's, you, here's you a, can't, this we is, can't just have our. The determination is we're going to have this on the agenda. If we have to have it in two days, or if you want to have it sooner, but we should not be discussing this now. Some of us are privy, to, and this is nothing to, to say that I'm against appointing. I'm not. I, I don't even really know him that way, but, but this is premature. This is not what we were all anticipated discussing and doing tonight. If so, it should have been on here. Um, You're right, it should have been on here. Agreed. Yeah. But, but it should have been a little I further. Mean, that was, I, 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 I mean, I'd stretch, it, I'd stretch it to do maybe consider an interim to, <clears throat> to fill and then we can make it official. But until we're all on the same page with all the information, because we're all coming at this from I can see um, we all have different information that, and we should all have be privy to the same information. So Madam that's, Chair, yes. Is, is Lieutenant Dan down here? I think he's here tonight. Thank well, you. I'd, like to, I'd like to ask him if he's even interested. I, I think it's unfair to do that. No, I, I, I will not have him come up. I, I rarely pull that, you know that, it's, but as chair, I, again, I just don't think it's appropriate. So Madam Chair, I would make a motion that we direct town uh, Administrator Andrew Gillis to reach out to Lieutenant Dan Dow. A, ask him if he is interested in being interim chief. And if he is in being interim chief, um, Andrew, I would have phrased this to have him be appointed interim chief for the next week or two while we have. Well, Max is still here to talk to the third, no matter what, though. Right. But <clears throat> my feelings are if it's going to be Lieutenant Dow or anybody else. Mm -hmm. We want that person to have time with Chief Maxfield before he leaves so there could be a smooth transition. Not, by the way, here's your first day on the job and the old chief is gone, so good luck to you. Mm -hmm. So, at minimum, I would like uh, uh, Town Minister and, uh, Andrew Gullis to reach out to Lieutenant Dowd and, and inquire if he'd be willing to or interested in being interim chief for a week until we can have this on our next agenda. And discuss it uh, more at length then. Well, I'll take up a discussion, but just for for the board as a whole, what 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 is our direction? For example, are we looking to promote internally? That's step one. Then two, is it or are we going to open it up to everybody? <clears throat> what is this, basically what are we looking for? Because when we think around appointments and starting this, or are we going to discuss this in a week? which will then put things out potentially another week or two. And this thing could just keep going and going and going. I, so I do not believe that's the intent. No, no, but yeah, but I, I suppose like, so, Karen, so, yeah. what it, so what are the board's wishes? Because quite frankly, I would only be looking at somebody internally for, for this role. So, so I, wait, I, I wait, agree. So, uh, hold on one second, folks. We're about 15 minutes late for that's the true. hearing that we should have started. Would you be willing to pick up, table this? Till after we do the yeah, that's fine with me. So they're, 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 they're they've, been, they've been really patient. So you good with that? Everyone good with that? Yeah. You don't have to vote. No, oh, that works for me. All right, thank you. Hold that. We'll get right back to it. Thank you. All right, so Andrew, we are moving on to the Weimar Dangerous Dog Hearing. You want to read the memo, please? Please find attached. Nine complaints received on a dangerous dog owned by Richard Weimer, 4510 Schoolhouse Road. Letter hand delivered to the owner of the dog by the Charlton Police, Mr. Weimer call today and will be in attendance. Report from Animal Control Officer Ann Salou. Police report and Mass General Law Chapter 140, Section 157, Nuisance or Dangerous Dogs, Orders for Remedial Action, 
appeal violation of order. Under Mass General Law, Chapter 140, Section 157, once a complaint is received that a dog is a nuisance by reason of vicious disposition or excessive barking or any other disturbance, the selectman shall investigate or cause to be investigated such complaint, including the examination of an examination of an oath of the complaint and make complaint and make such order concerning the restraint or disposal of such dog as may be deemed necessary. It is that order that may, that the owner may then appeal to the district court. I have attached the public hearing guidelines for dog complaints for your use during the hearings, which outlines the procedure for hearing. All right. No. So my responsibility as chairman is to establish that we have quorum and we do. And I need to call the, the public hearing to order. So I will. So this public hearing is called pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 140, Section 157, on the complaint of a dangerous dog by reason of vicious disposition owned by Richard Weimer, 45, number 10, Schoolhouse Road. And now, Mary, I know, so just so everyone knows, um, everyone who will be speaking on this matter had to sign in, in my understanding. I know Mary has um, mm -hmm. helped with that. Once they <clears throat> sign in, I have to swear them in. And I think Mary suggested that I can um, I, I do it all. Yeah, you like do it all. Yeah. So, yeah, but they're, they're all able to come in at the same time. Well, I think they can hear me. All right, do I need to get up and like go first? Yeah, they probably come up a little closer. They got the door open. So all right, let's do this. Yeah, Karen, we can't just tell you to, to work your internet connection. <laughs> I know. I wish. Right? All right. So, Mary, you confirmed everyone. Everyone signed. No, only a few people have because they came in after, so they'll have to sign if they come up to speak. All right. So now we have to do the oath. Although, give testimony in this matter. Okay. So everyone's going to give testimony. Needs to rise and raise your right hand and repeat the following oath. I now state your name. Do solemnly swear and affirm that the testimony I am about to give in this matter will be the truth. Okay. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Acknowledging this oath under the pains and penalties of perjury. So help me God. Now I will ask that our animal control officer, inspector, to come forward and give a report. Thank you. We try to talk very loud. Hey, Good job, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and would you like to just? State your name and who you are, and your obviously your position. And you can, if you're comfortable, you may. Only if you want to. Yeah, it's only if you want to. Yes. Thank you. Um, animal control officer and inspector of Charlton. Um, I have been in the animal, in the animal inspector for the state for 34 years. Past 20, I have served this town, Charlton, and as animal control officer for 24 years, and past 14, I have served Charlton also. Just read for the best of my knowledge. I do not see this incident occur. I write after the fact and cite them to all the witnesses involved. And if you hold on, can everyone hear? No. Can we do anything to, to help? Can they, can they, can they, okay, and just speak a little loud if you want to turn. Anything you can do. Thank you so much. So at approximately 5 p.m. on August 18, 2020, I received multiple calls about a gray and white pit bull running in the front end of Schoolhouse Road and that it had attacked a small puppy and a young girl walking in. I got dressed and arrived within 15 minutes. Upon arrival, I saw Sergeant Miguel and the EMTs were already there. The girl complained to me that this is how it happened. That's the way I understood that. There were three of them called in small dogs that had been walking down on the 10th schoolhouse road. Two on a small uh, dog bell that was in the dog pit bull described as a gray white ran, dog ran out from the 45 10th schoolhouse road and bit the puppy and one of the young girls. The 
and the puppy ran off and the pit bull returned back to 4510 Schoolhouse Road. The owner of the pit bull dog was named Richard Weiland. The dog came in two. The puppy, the dog kitten, was Ella, and the girl kitten was Madeline McDonald Trinity. Madeline's mother was named Trinity Malby. She said she owned the puppy. Their address was 4410 Schoolhouse Road in Shelton. I spoke to them to, and to understand what had happened, and I checked the puppy and advised them to speak to veterinary care for the injury. Madeline had already been checked by the EMTs, and her arm was wrapped, so I did not see her injuries. I wrote down the information and then went to Richard Wyman's house. I also asked him what had happened. He said the dog rolled a boy kneeling on the deck, the dog moved, and, and also the fence yard gate was left open. He said the dog had ran after the girls. He did not see the incident because they had turned off the farm on purpose. Then he said the puppy ran into the road and a white jeep struck the puppy and the person stopped um, and they got, they got the puppy out from underneath the jeep. They did not get the play tour in the name of the person died. The action I took. I looked at the, the dog for the dog for the quarantine. And I also rechecked it at the end of the 10-day quarantine. I looked at the deck and I saw the board that he showed me that had broke and advised him to reinforce all of it with some heavy wire fencing to secure and to secure the gate with a chain and a lock so it doesn't get left open. His yard is chain link fence and but the gate is left open by the sun. I asked him to do this as soon as possible and let me know so I could inspect it. Also, I advised him that the 10 day quarantine the dog can be walked into the fenced yard on a leash by an adult owner and no children could walk the dog. I also checked the paperwork on Julie. The lady's vaccine had expired on 3 2020. He also showed me a dog license for 2020 in Charlton. I issued him a 10 day quarantine notice and explained it to him. Dogs are quarantined at the owner's fur mask general law 330 chapter. 10-1. I also issued him a citation, 25 for failure to have a rabies vaccine up to date, along with the $25 fine for the dog lying at large. I informed him that any and all expenses caused by the dog are to be paid by him, although this would be a civil matter in court. I asked him to call me as soon as the fence and the deck was secured and the gate. I left and got numerous calls from the parents and some of the children involved. Uh, Andrew Malby, Arnie Sanchez, called him back and explained to Mr. Malby and Mr. Sanchez what actions I had been taking. They broke up sets I did not take the dog away and tried to explain that this is not the way it's done. Dogs are quarantined at the owner's homes and that they are personal property and have no right to take them. That's basically what I did have. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I did have some, I did go through, look up some um, previous incidents, which I can tell you on those. On April 28, 2016, there was a call stating that the dogs at 4510 Schoolhouse Road were, were fighting in the house and the people were yelling, etc. The police responded, I got a bite no, dog bite notice the next, well, within a few days, that a person visiting had tried to break up the dog fight and got bitten. His name was Tyler Christian. Therefore, I did a 10 day quarantine on a dog named Blue and a dog named Hayes, since Gail was not sure which dog bit him. On November 2nd, 2016, I recall received a call from a man named Todd Lemon, who was walking him with his daughter and their dog, Abby, when a dog named Blue got out of the house, uh, broke a cable, and bit the dog named Abby. Did a quarantine on Blue, 10 day quarantine. Mr. Weiner said Blue had been tied at the front and the cable broke. At that time, I asked Mr. Weiner to put up a gate at the front door to ensure the dog does not get out and restrain, and restrain it in the backyard. Also, when in public, to muggle, muggle the dog for safety. He complied with those terms. Since the last occurrence in 2016, to the best of my knowledge, and the police job, Lodge were searched. I have not had any other calls on the dog being moved until this incident. 
it includes um, the report of the police logs and the log on the quarantine on the previous quarantine. So just for my clarification, we're looking at basically over the past several years, three instances, correct, with the dog? Yeah, but they hadn't been in from since 2016. Correct. The dog so it had been contained in the well for almost two <coughs> years. Any other questions for me? You can do it. You, I'm sorry, Chair. Do you have a recommendation for us on, on this is tough, you know, to, to really figure out what to do next. Um, possibly some training with a, a trainer with the dog or a level outside every time it's outside the doors of the home. Um, we did comply with the fence, fencing the gas and um, chain, putting the chain and lock on the fence in the yard. Because you're the professional and, and we're just selectmen and we don't have very good five years of experience. Um, we always look for you for guidance. So looking, assessing the whole situation, what do you think is the best, the, the best way to pr proceed with with all the information you know about? Is this our, if um, if we don't force him to get rid of the dog, right? is, is our, our lives in danger? Is the dog that aggressive or are these just such isolated instances instances that another she should be given or just that's what I'm kind of, I'm kind of looking for. Well, I think that the, each instance it was dog aggression. The fight in the house was between the two dogs and when somebody in, you know, intervenes, we got that. The second time was again, dog, dog fight. So the dog went after another dog. And then in this instance, it was the dog, him going, the dog going after another dog. So he clearly, the dog was dog aggressive. How old do you think dog is? Um, I think he's around six, five or six. So in twenty sixteen, he would have been he's a young, year old. He yeah, was a puppy. Year old, yeah. so. You ready to hear from the complainant, or did you have any questions? No, I'll, I'll, I'll have more for Ann potentially later. But okay. yeah, no, I'm good to go. All right. Thanks, Ann. Thanks, Ann. Am I supposed to sign this? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, don't go too far. No, thank you. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> So the next we'll hear the complainant testimony. Mary, can we do that in order who, who signed it? Do we have that? We want to do the order of the doc. The com complainant's yeah. testimony. That's what ha that's how it's listed here. I know. And you, you signed in, right? Yes, I did. Awesome. Welcome. And again, if you're comfortable, you may write yeah. your fire of a part. If not, though. Two or three times a week. <laughs> so trust me, I'm very safe. Okay. So um, thank you. Very, very uh, nice to meet you all. Um, I'm Martin Sanchez. I've been a resident of Charlton for about five years. Father of two teenagers today um, and, and, and my wife. Uh, I'm from San Francisco Road. Um, I'm also, uh, for context sake, I'm also a professor at Clark University and I'm a chief technologist and cybersecurity engineer at IBM. So I have, um, I, I wrote a statement. I figured, you know, I, I want to deliver a message in two parts, if I may, um, so that I don't lose a bit in what happened here. But um, pretty much the latest incident that happened in August, uh, in which my daughter and two other teen teenagers were involved, it could have been so much worse, right? Um, there are two parts to my, to my message to you. First, could have should never become synonymous of inaction. I am very, very upset about this whole situation. These dogs have terrorized our street and I. You've heard about only documented instances, but you have received already by now more instances of um, neighbors coming forward and others that I did not hear from the animal control officer about Mr. Lemon, which is an, um, um, an officer that lives down the street whose dog got attacked and severely injured. 
maybe I missed that. So there has been many incidents where other pet, pets got severely hurt. Humans have had been hurt as well, both physically and emotionally. My 16 year old daughter, she's petrified of walking her dog by herself down the street because of this incident. Uh, being chased by two people is no joke. I'm a professional, semi-professional athlete. Um, I run and do endurance races, and I run all kinds of terrains, and I can guarantee you, when you're being chased by a dog, and especially two people, it is something very, very scary. I mind you, we are dog owners. We are owners of three dogs ourselves. We are animal owners, and we understand the dynamics of having dogs. So um, nobody should ever feel frightened about walking down their streets at the bottom line. How many incidents need to happen before the town authorities do something about it? That's the bottom line. When I asked the animal control officer, how come nothing had been done if these dogs have in the past attacked others? She responded that they hadn't done anything in a long time. So I feel that the town attorneys, forgive me, have failed us considering the lack of a strict action taken today. So the concrete request that I'm advocating for is not a favor. I'm not asking to cut corners here. I am asking for an action that is pursuant with the Mass General Law, Chapter 140, Section 157. That's exactly what I'm asking. Being this dog dangerous, given their history of violence and multiple reports of attacks, and order measures accordingly. That's what I'm asking. I will hold the town responsible if anyone else gets chased or attacked by these dogs again. I am very upset because I am having to spend time on my own, having to come here because these dogs continue to do this. These are not chihuahuas. These are very large and very strong dogs. So you know this story. You have at least three documented reports of prior attacks. You have formal written complaints of multiple neighbors, at least six in your records by now. These dogs are not a nuisance. This is not a nuisance anymore. This is not dogs barking and yapping away. They are dangerous. And in my career, there are public safety concerns. I don't have to be a dog officer or a genius to figure that out. Do something about it. That is my request. Do better than you have done until now. That is the first and most important part of my message. And if I may, a quick second part of my message. This has to do with a call to reform how severe animal attacks are handled in the town. If there are animals that are repetitive offenders past beyond numerous, I feel that the town ought to examine and improve the processes in place. Let me be specific with three things that could make an immediate positive impact. Number one, documentation of visuals in animals' attacks. Did you know, and quite frankly, I found this ludicrous that I have to request in written the need for a report to be typed by the animal control officer, otherwise it would not be typed. That's what I was told. So I had to write a request in order for a report to be generated and wait 10 days for that report to be generated. So I know that other towns do it automatically, so should Charlton. Listen, when a police officer attempts to a call, it is my understanding that the responsive responding officer has to go back and write a report. Why if the ACO is a member of the town police and reports directly to the chief of police, um, directly is not held to the same standards. Should be an automatic thing. The second recommendation is that in the event of vicious dog attacks, right, um, that the case is brought forward to the board of selectmen automatically. It is my understanding that the ACO is appointed by the board of selectmen. This is at least what I found on the website. And who else is more qualified than to assess the severity of a situation regarding animals and attacks? So I would expect that the ACO to be more vigorous and proactive. Again, the fact that I'm standing or sitting in front of you um, makes me feel like I'm doing the ACO's job, to be honest with you. You have got to go to the selectmen if you want something to happen. This is what I received in response to, uh, from the ACO when I confronted her of her inaction and lack of the stringent handling of the matter. Third, if there are aggressive animals for which there is a record of, like in this case, why are they being allowed to be with expired vaccinations? I've gotten in the mail nasty grounds, as we call it in the industry, about getting compliance with your dogs or you're going to be fine or these are the consequences. 
And yet we have animals for which they have been reported to be aggressive with no vaccinations. So there is, you know, for sure the opportunity for the town to revisit how the tracking and the tagging is being done of uh, dangerous uh, dogs, especially of non-aggressive dogs. In the specific of those dogs, by the way, it's two dogs that chased my kid when she was petrified holding puppies, right? For not to be beaten, two dogs. It was five months their vaccinations expired. We're not talking a week or two weeks. Five months that these animals were allowed to wander around with their expired vaccinations and the owners with impunity. That is unacceptable. So that was my two part message. I appreciate your time and um, I look forward to your resolution. Thank you. Hi, welcome. You can again state your name and you make sure you please that you have signed in. I didn't sign in over there. No, no Christine. Oh, here. Yeah, okay. Um, my name is Christine Savoy. I live at 42 10 Schoolhouse Road. And one time, okay. Three times, absolutely unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. We're being held hostage in our own yards. We can't walk our dogs in the street on a leash the way you're supposed to do it. Two times too many. I don't want to see a dog hurt. That's not what I'm looking for. But I also don't want to see a child hurt. And that's what's coming next. Um, the, the dogs are all over the neighborhood. They're kept on a 12 foot deck in the backyard. They jump over the 12 foot deck onto, I'm not sure if it's a bulkhead or a shed, but they jump onto there and jump down, and that's how they get out. But then at that point, is there's, a, there's still a chain link fence. The second barrier, am I under? No, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I don't I'm think so. Out. And if it's open, well, yeah. neglectfully, totally unacceptable. These are small children. We have a small dog that we walk once, sometimes two to three times a day. And we won't go that way anymore. We have to go the other way and hope for the best. And I just wanted to put that out there. One time, okay. Three times documented, not counting these situations that have not been documented, unacceptable. I'm asking you as the board to do something. It's not okay. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you all the court again in a couple weeks. <laughs> 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 Hi, thank you all. <laughs> My name is Caroline Alvey. I'm a Smith Arm Ally with Dom Tribute. She is the one who's sick, and her our dog is the one that was attacked. We just bought two small Australian Shepherds at the beginning of June because we lost our last dog. She should be able to walk her dogs on the street without fear. The direction she goes by their house, there's a cul-de-sac that she walks around with the dogs and comes back home. This is a good walk for my daughter and her puppies. She can't do that anymore. She's petrified to go near their house. She's petrified of large dogs now. Our dog that was attacked um, is now being seen numerous times during the week at the vet. She has a broken leg and puncture wounds all over. The vet also has stated that she was not hit by a car. There is no um, damage to her that was displayed being hit by a car. Where her leg is broken is between the bite marks that were through her leg, and it's a middle bone that's broken that would be displayed as being like from being bit. Um, it's also severely infected, and this is costing us a fortune. And it's emotionally draining on my daughter, who is afraid to walk. Our other dog was still okay and got away. Um, my dog, we, we try to walk every direction all the time, but now she's petrified to even walk 
as you try to drive for a second to get it moving up. Um, she's terrified of animals. She, whenever she hears a bark, me and her screams up and we just stay there for a few seconds. I skipped her the direction once I didn't catch her dog box to the door. And she's a dog bar. Anything gone, she freaks out. The first week, every time she heard a dog bark, even her own dog bark, she would break down crying. This isn't fair. And something needs to be done with those dogs. We live right across the street, and we should not be in our yard afraid of their dog being loose. So again, like everybody else, we're asking that you make a decision. And also, I have four other children in my home when I am fostering, and my other three younger children, all ages five and a half, six, and seven. So if something were to happen to them because their dogs are loose, because they're allowed to keep them, I will hold the town accountable. That's all. Thank you. Just one, I have one question. Like, did the vet give you a report saying that, that, that it, anything in writing? Not the vet report. Um, saying that it wasn't a And I have target. a copy of the x rays. It would have to be in writing. I couldn't be the x rays. I need it back. No, I'm going to. We have an attorney for this. We're at least 2,000 in. There's a few pages to it. And I have them in the process for our attorney writing up the whole thing about how it was not a car, it was this, which I can submit to you as soon as I get that. Yeah, that needs to be part of the record for this, okay. so we'll get a copy. Yeah, because on holiday, I need to back them up and include some other stuff inside. We just scan a copy. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's. Mm -hmm. If anybody else wants to see this, it, it, it does just say functional. Yeah, we just got a copy of the camera. Thank you. Thank you. Just do one complaint. Any other complaints? <clears throat> Would you mind if I just wrote? You are? How is the FBI that we split first to see what happens? I think once you come up. Oh, if you do sign in, if you have you got, yeah, please sign your name. Hello. Sorry, I'm really shaky right now. So my name is Coral. Just say the, the dogs are. I've been in the neighborhood since sixth grade. I've I've gone by every day on the bus. The fence has never been secure. It was really hard for me. I mean, I'm one of my friends and I've known her for a while now and we've been taking our dogs every single day. And this was really unfortunate that this happened, but just the pain, the dog cramped down on his leg and was thrashing it. It was, it was like a rag doll. It really was. And it was screaming, screaming. So just knowing that the pain it must have gone through and then even afterwards, like to have run home on a broken leg. And Maddie is really unfortunate she got bit, but so much, she, there's so much on the news and so much could have gone wrong. And even walking, I, I, I go pick her up still. Like I go walk over there to get her. And it's just really hard to go by their house. You go like just hearing the dogs and they're always out. Not not the dogs, but they they're out and you hear them when he comes and they're in. But um I'm sorry, what was that? What did you just say? They're just make I hear them making comments over there oh, while okay. they're they were talking. I know they're not happy with us and that's frightening as well. So 
will die. I don't want anything to ever happen to my dog. And it was terrifying when the dog first lunged at my puppy and I and jumped up to try to get him. Like having multiple dogs, I have nothing with big dogs, but now I'm I just I don't want to be any near any big dogs at all, really. It freaks me out. Like I think that they might just turn and like snap. And I don't want my dogs near any other dogs because of it. It just really makes me anxious now. And I, I just really want something to be done about it. I think you guys could do that. That would like, mean a lot to us. I know it means a lot to Maddie as well. We could feel safe walking our dogs again, especially down the road and when you have to avoid the road itself. That's all. Thank, thank you. you. On behalf of all, all of us, thank you for that. I know it's not easy. So. You did great, and thank yeah. you. Okay. Any other complaints? Um, so, Mr. Mr. Weiner. Sir, and, and please forgive me, is it Weiner or Weaver? I want to make sure that I'm saying Weiner. Weiner, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I got that. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Okay, so we have had a few situations. These, they're talking about multiple situations. Every other situation was something in my house where my, my two dogs went at each other. Never running the street. I have neighbors that if my dogs were running the street, and would have a call. My dogs bark too much and gets a call. I've had a neighbor that's called 15 times in a year just for my barking dogs if they go outside for too long. So for them to say there's incidences that were never recorded is false, number one. Number two, you know, these people are in here telling you about how they're fear for their life. And as they're walking by snickering at my house every day, and I have it on video and pictures of this, but they're in fear of their life, okay? Just this morning, Madeline, throwing dog poop in my front yard. Okay, all right. I've, I've, okay. I've calmed down a little bit. Yeah. I really so, would. it's just, it's, it's you know what I mean? Yeah. They, they're sitting here saying, how, oh, we're in fear of our life or this or that. If I'm told to do something with these animals, I do it. I look after my dogs. You know, it, it was a freak thing. I will say I do have the video of all of them antagonizing the dog on my property. <clears throat> but nobody said that they stopped and let their dogs go to the bathroom in my front woods before he broke structure. So, I mean, there is other evidence that just was not brought up. Any questions? Well, where is that evidence? Because does Anne have it? Already. Actually, I, I don't know if, I even, if that's even a fair question. I think to say right it down to the Jeep that ran the dog over, I have. And then there, you know what I mean? So there, there's a lot more to it. To, but, but to say there were two incidents that, that most of the incidents happened inside the house, two were documented and they're very serious. So what, let me go back through what happened. So on the one where they're talking about the neighbor down the street and the dog, my dog was actually on a leash at that point, and he and the clip had broken on the end of the leash. He wasn't tied to the fence, he wasn't tied, the clip just had broken off the end, and that's how he went as a, we were putting him in the house. And this is the one in 2016? Yes. Um, the one where Tyler Christian doesn't know what dog bit them, so technically, there's only one, and this would be the second on blue, because he's not sure what dog actually might have been him. But the two dogs were fighting over a ball they were playing with, tried to break it up, he got bit. So, Mr. Weimer, we have a letter from uh, Mr. Todd Lemon saying that there was another incident uh, regarding a dog was attacked, uh, his female border collie. That's the incident I'm talking about. Okay, that's the one. That is in the police log. He's just, that's, I didn't, I don't know his name. I know no, no, it's okay. The cop down the street. <laughs> so, just speaking for myself. 
that's when he, the dog wasn't tied to the porch. It was on a leash, but the, the clip on the end of the leash broke when we're going to bring him back in the house, and he ran off. You can understand the neighbors and our concerns. I, I, I do, and I'm not saying I don't. I, I just, if, if you guys can't plead a case, tell the truth about the case. Don't don't come in saying, oh, well, we're scared of our life, but you're walking by 37 times a day, throwing stuff in my yard, this, that, and the other thing, but I can't walk that way. And I mean, at this point, I'm not even letting my dogs really out besides the bathroom, and they go back. Generally, when it comes to dog hearings, and I'll just, having had my share, they're one of the most uncomfortable and miserable experiences a member of the board is like my concern with this, though, is that it's gone from mistakes happen. I get that. We all make them. God knows I have. Um, my concern is that I'm sensing a pattern in that there's a lack of control of the dogs for whatever reason, whether it's gates are open, clips are breaking. And when the dogs get into that aggressive mode, we've now crossed the line in that it bit a child. And looking at what the pictures I've seen, it appears that it wasn't a deliberate bite of the child, but regardless, the child was bitten. That now crosses a completely different line with me. If it's a dog on dog thing, look, it's it's not right. Things can get handled the, the, the right way. So let me ask you, let me like turn the tables from a certain empathy perspective. What would you recommend? What, what are you volunteering or suggesting so, to do so that literally, we and, and I mean this absolutely nicely that we never have to hear about this again. So here is where my you know on the, on the chapter 145 157 law states as a nuisance dog. I don't think he's a dangerous dog, as in going after people and he just gets out and he's gonna bite humans and this and that. I don't find him as that. Maybe a nuisance because everybody's calling or whatnot. Okay, but you know, I can guarantee you'll be contained. I guarantee all the fences are now locked up and padlocked with chains around them. And the deck has been re redone. So there is no chance he's getting back out. And now when my dogs go out, they're only out for about five minutes as one of me or my wife sitting there watching them. We are watching them at all times as they go out and then bring them back in. Let me ask you this, just again, just, just, have, just having a conversation. Why wasn't this done before? What happened was there was there was stuff up, but it actually bit through the wood wood rods. Now I'm now I did it through steel, so it's all steel fencing now where it was wood prior. The gate thing, um, I had a lock on it. It's got a lock on the you know how the hooks go down into the bar, and then you got to lock into the bar. I eliminated that now because if it was pushed on, it would open. So now I actually have a chain with a lock that goes around it. So even if you push on the gate, cannot be open. Can the dogs go over? No. At all? No. Um, I actually just had somebody a little while back, up, upright fence, go through and redo the whole fence all the way around the yard. And they put angled corners in so that he can't climb there. What I'm struggling with, quite honestly, because it's always better to be camping is one way or another the dogs didn't declare something tonight, whether it's nuisance or dangerous. And I don't know if the, if the conditions will actually be that different at the end of the day. Um, I mean, some of the things that, again, I just throwing out there to the board, I like Ann's idea around, quite honestly, if it didn't bite a child, I'd be a little more lenient. But the moment it bit a child, again, I'm not gonna be redundant, but that's where I crossed the line, that anytime it's outside, quite frankly, it would need to be muzzled. That would, I mean, and that includes on your deck. Any, anytime that you were outside of your actual premises, it would have to be on that. And quite honestly, again, just I'm one of five, so it could be a very different conversation. Um, that if there was any, and I'm just being honest with you on this, if there was any change of the dog escaping, getting out of the yard, being off leash for all intents and purposes outside of your fenced in area for any reason, I would actually ask that as part of the conditions that you surrender the dogs, because it's what? Oh, that 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 Mr. Weimer would actually surrender the dogs. Why would I surrender two when we're having problems with one? Well, the one at least that. Well, again, it, it would obviously depend upon the situation. What I think I'm concerned around is patterns of of, of aggressive dog behavior, 
And to your point, when, when, when the dogs, uh, I believe during the first incident where Ms. Tyler, I believe the, the, the name was, yeah. uh, may, may, have, may have gotten bit, he wasn't sure about which one. Right. So that tells me that if, if, if he's not sure, you may not be sure. So either dog could actually have that predisposition. So I, for myself, am erring on the side of caution because I don't want to have any neighbors First of all, to have to worry about walking by anyone's yard, much like you should not have to worry about walking by theirs with your dogs on, on a leash and, and, and a muzzle. It would be the same exact conversation, quite honestly. So again, I'm not sure where I'm going specifically on nuisance versus dangerous, but I will tell you, I'm a lot less lenient on this and I'm not looking to put the dog down. So I will, I'm just being honest with, with, with like people in the audience and yourself, I'm not looking to put the dog down. I think they're with training, muzzles, as well as additional, quite honestly, one might even call it draconian conditions to make sure that the dog is safe, you're safe, and quite honestly, as long as the children in the neighborhood are safe, I think we can probably reach, at least myself, an agreement. But the moment any of, any of my conditions would be broken, it's gonna be a much different conversation. And that's not a threat in any way. I, 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 I'm just trying to be completely candid with you. I agree with that. Um, I'm not saying that, that, you know, yeah, it's went far at this point, but, you know, I have been good with not, not with them out, not getting out anymore. You know, um, I haven't had calls. Nobody's been calling, you know, and Anne can be the first one to tell you that, you know, I was seeing her once a week at one point because my neighbor was calling because my dogs were barking all the time. And right away, I, I fixed this, the problem. So, you know, I try and do everything that I'm told to do with my dogs. Uh, Mike, David, yep. I, I've got several questions and I'm hoping that I can get the answers from the appropriate parties. Um, one would be, I think this might be for Ann, if, if I may. Mr. Lemon's email complaint. Is that in the tree or is that? Yeah, not? it's in there, right? So that's, one I, of, that's one of the three? Yeah, I read that out. Okay. Todd Lemon. Walking, so I would just go out on the okay. So we have the three incidents. And, and while so, David, if you just don't mind, I want clarity on one thing for all of us. You've heard all the testimony tonight, and you've started obviously to the best of your knowledge. Would you say everyone has reported accurately, or did you hear any discrepancy or inconsistencies? I, I hear, I'm hearing that the dog is loose all the time, but nobody called the police and called me on them. I had them since 16, and so. I think that's what I wanted to I wanted to know because we've listened to everything. So thank you for clarifying. Yeah, Sorry for interrupting you. Charlton Police Department blogs on the logs. Okay. And we went through all the logs. Thank you, David. So yeah, and part of this I think is and where I do agree with Mr. Sanchez is there's two issues here. One is the the issue of the dog and the dog biting, and the other one is internal as far as the town's concerned. And I guess I could say an apology and an embarrassment to Mr. Sanchez and, 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 the, and the other people here. We can't depose people who are no longer here. So we can't talk to former chiefs, former town administrators. We can't even do that. Um, so I'm embarrassed and my apologies if we can't do that. I don't think there should ever be an instance in this town when a dog bites a person or bites a dog that this board isn't at least made aware. We don't do the enforcement, that's Ann's job. But this board should be made aware. And I am concerned, and again, it's not Ann's job. You do your job, it's just the chief's job and the town manager's job to notify us of this. So I think part of what we have to do going forward, and I would request this board at another meeting post and have a discussion around process, um, because we should never not know. Um, I think that's a problem. Where I disagree with Ms. Borowski is the line being crossed I think the line was crossed when the dog was bit. And then the time the dog was bit the second time, and then the child was bit. And the problem, one thing that Mr. Borowski and I share is the unfortunate displeasure of having to have, have sat on multiple dog hearings. They all suck. That's the bottom line. There's no winner. So as a dog owner, and we, we rescue dogs, what we've always learned is we always hire a trainer to bring in dogs. What we learned from the trainer is you're not really training the dog so much as you're training the owner. But something else we learned is the importance, and most people don't realize that they should always hire a trainer to go with them to choose the dog they get. 
because not every dog is appropriate for every family in every neighborhood. Dogs have different aggressions. It could be a food aggression, it could be a dog aggression, it could be people aggression. Where I agree with Ms. Borowski and my concern is not a question of how many years have gone between incidents, but simply the virtue of the fact that there have been so many incidents. And to me, and I'm, I'm not Ann and I'm not the trainer, but having been through this again, sadly, too many times, and having been through the adoption and training process and what I've been taught by trainers about dogs and adoption and training dogs, is that if a dog has an aggression like this and it's not being addressed, the dog, and it's not to say you don't love your dog, you probably love the dog to death, regardless of its aggression. You know, it may have a food aggression, like I said, or a dog aggression, but that aggression may make that dog not the right dog for you. Doesn't mean you love it any less, it's just a reality. Um, also, there was a comment made about, I think it was Bill, I don't think we would have the legal right, you make me tell you I'm wrong, I don't think we have the legal right to have part of the terms be that he would have to surrender that dog if it happens again. I think you would have to declare the dog a danger, to work with Ann, and there's a process. I don't think he can just say, I agree to surrender my dog. Um, but we can, we, can, we can look into that. I will tell you that right now, like Bill, I'm torn. I lean more toward declaring a dog a dangerous dog. That that's where I'm leaning, um, because this is not a, a one-time incident. It's not a two-time incident. This is a third time. How many dogs or people? How many times does dog have to bite before something is done? Now, I think the only thing I could even consider to stop my desire to declare this dog a dangerous dog would be to Bill's point. If that dog ever leaves the house, it has to have a muzzle. Because if it does get out, at least that way, it can't bite someone. I know they're here. I walk my two rescues. My children walk my rescues. My wife does. We go down the street, there's a dog tied out. That dog sees my dogs, it jumps right up and it bolts and it, it gets pulled, but still, then my dogs go like that and we can't, we're gonna walk our dogs down the street. So it doesn't mean they don't love their dog any less either, right? But the reality is, you should be able to have your dog and love your dog. They should be able to have their dogs and love their dogs and walk the streets without worry. And I'm in the uncomfortable position right now of saying, for me, it's either the dog is on a muzzle, if it's not in that house, or to create a dog a dangerous dog. And I hate doing that. Because to me, again, it's, still, it's never the dog's fault. It's, it's always, you know, either the owner or the dog's not in the right place. And this may be simply the dog's not in the right place. If the dog has aggression, it may need to be with a, in a certain environment where that aggression can be handled so that other dogs will don't get hurt or their, that risk is removed. I'm just, that's, that's, I think, I think I've addressed all of my notes. And, and, I, and I would ask your permission if I remember one to come back. So I think that's it. All right, no problem. I will just go over to see Patsy. See if you have any comments or questions. Um, no, I. Um, I, I agree with Bill. I think that if we could do a, this is the last time and next time, it kind of, you know, with these are all the rules and next time it happens, there'll be a hearing and, and, the, and, the, and the dog will be declared dangerous and we go from there. I don't even know what that process is after that. If, um, but I do agree with Sure. Steve, I, um, let me just let Steve comment. Then, then I, I did hear, I did hear Ann, and thanks for the report. I did hear you say um, you thought it was an aggressive animal. Yeah, I think it was a And I don't think she picked it up while that thing took pregnant. And, 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 that for Mr. Sanchez, the, the reason it probably took 10 days for her to get the report is she had she was waiting until she, she could go back and clarify that he did the he, he did the uh, the game. Well, we just quarantined no, 10 days. Yeah, but then not really good yeah, yeah. So I did that, I don't think that was really just saying just so you know. And I don't feel because everything that I did write writing a book that we did. Three times three times is 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 very, very disturbing to me. Yeah. 
And what I fear is if that if that girl was walking, if the, the younger one was walking down the street with her dog by herself, what may have happened? They were. There was no adult. Can I speak? No, there were, there were two girls, right? Was, but, if, well, but if she was alone. Hey, well, um, probably. And there was another boy with them. Yeah. All, I mean, 12 and a half, 16, 16. My biggest issue is when you read into chapter 140, uh, 157, right? It states right there that any taunting, um, aggravation to the dog near the dog's property and brick structure that is now on the people that tease that dog. I don't know if you read that in part three. Um, that, but we do have the video of them sitting there at the end of the driveway while their little white dog goes into our property to use the bathroom. And they're letting their dog just sit there and antagonize and antagonize this dog till finally they walk away. Mr. Weimer, I'm having a hard time with that defense, quite honestly. I, I agree with you that if there's taunting, etc., meaning God forbid someone throwing a rock at your dog. I would not fault your dogs for biting that person. I honestly would not. But to have a young tween, uh, probably I'm not sure. It's just the video. right. But to, to to think that a that a that a young group of children walking their dog on a rural street is the equivalent of taunting that would justify a dog breaking loose and biting. I, I I'm not buying that. Like defense, taunting, to taunting in my. What I had seen when I rewound the video and I watched the video is actually them minding their business walking, right? Get to the end of my driveway and every single one of them just stop there for a minute and stop and just sit there and sit there and then let the other one go into the bushes and then proceed. But is that, uh, I mean, but really, is that taunting? I mean, there- Let's not, we're, we're getting into- Well, yeah. no, I mean, I think it's so important. I also if, 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 if that's a defense, I mean, I just want to talk through it. That. We've had issues with them in the past already. We we're in a whole court thing with something else that had happened uh, years ago. Madam no, Chair, I no, recommend Kim. No, Kim, no, we can't we go down that path. We have a fear of them. Okay, we don't. No, Kim, that's don't, a different Don't make me use this. I never had yet. Yeah. Please. No, so we really can't. We're talking to ourselves. But thank so. you, honestly. All right, David, last, last, last time, please. Last time. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. Can I talk, so, please? Um, in one second. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you yep. Yeah, no, I, I see you. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm not trying to interrupt anybody. I just want to get my chance to talk. I'm just going to go back to, again, separate issues. And I, I will point out that, to your point, two wrongs don't make a right. Even if that is the case, and I'm not going to say it is or it isn't, that still, to me, is a separate issue from three instances of a dog biting. And I think they need to be treated separately. And, and if that's a separate issue, then that needs to be dealt with separately. Um, what I really wanted to say, and and I understand where it's like when uh, Rivlack is going with it, but where I think I differ is, to me, it's not about if there's another time. I think that our responsibility here is to take appropriate action to ensure that there isn't another time. So I don't want to sit here and have a conversation around, let's do this, and then if it happens again, another dog or another child or another person gets bit, then we'll do this. I think we need to take appropriate action this evening to ensure there is no other incident. Now, if we can find an appropriate action that protects his ability to, to keep his dog, love his dog, raise his dog, that keeps them safe, and I'm comfortable myself knowing that as long as that is followed, like the muzzle, because then it gets up, it's not going to bite, it can't bite, then I think that would be the, the, the primary goal short of being able to find a solution that's going to allow him to keep his dog under conditions like that so that dog cannot hurt somebody else, then I think there's only one decision. So we have to decide what's the appropriate course of action, nuisance or danger, to ensure that there is not another time, that we're not going to sit here again with this group of people discussing these same dogs. Thank you, David. So you may, did you sign in? Did you sign in? You did. Okay, then if you could state your name and address. Stephanie, I'm 45 Okay. Welcome. Do you want me to sign now or after? Before, please. And just, if you're going to get close, um, can you put your mask on? 
or we live together. Oh, we live together. No, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Okay. So um, I just want to let you know that I've seen what happened. Um, I'm not. I don't have a speech. I didn't write a speech. I'm not here to put anybody down. Um, my dog did not bite me, a little girl. I, I've seen what happened. He didn't bite the little girl. He gave me a boost. Um, she was holding the dog on the leash. The dog pulled her, her dog pulled her, and her dog must have been spooked. So obviously my dog, which it shouldn't have happened, and I'm, I'm gonna agree with that, it should not have happened. Um, I apologize to them. Um, I've got nothing against them. I don't know who they are. I know obviously who the people are who live next door for me. Um, and their daughter was friends with my daughter. Kate. She's been in my home around my dog. She knows my dog's not me. But the point is, I see what happened. And my thing is, is I don't, I have proof. I mean, you guys don't want to see it, that's fine. But I don't understand if somebody is in fear of their life, why are you still walking by this home when the dog attacks you? I don't understand that. Because it's their right. It's it is their right. Now. It's a public street. You're absolutely right. But you have children. If, if I was with my children, or even if I wasn't with my children, and I walked by somebody's home, and their dog got loose and attacked my children. I'm not gonna walk back by that home. I'm gonna go totally different. I'm gonna go a totally opposite way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. Like to sit here and fabricate the story, I'm not asking you guys to take sides. It's not what you do. That's true. I just don't want to accuse people no. of fabricating stories on either side. I I mean it's your decision. You're gonna you know you're gonna make the right decision. If I felt that my dog was a dangerous dog. I would have gave him up a long time ago. I would have surrendered him to, I would have, you know, called him myself. I don't feel that he's a dangerous dog. He's not a dangerous dog. Should he have got loose? No, absolutely not. Does he jump off the deck on the shed? Absolutely not. He's not out there long enough. He was out there that day like we just got home. So I should have got him in the house quicker and that's my fault. I didn't get him in the house quick enough. That's my fault. But this is a dog we're talking about. Like, it's, it's not right. It's not right. I have nothing, like I said, I've been out against the people. I don't know them. So I, I just, I think that, that, that to come in here and to try to, you know, say things that didn't happen, happen, that's not right. Like, it's just, it's not right. The dog didn't attack a child. Like, you keep saying child. He didn't attack no child. It wasn't a child that was bitten. Like, EMS you know, was on scene. EMS was, was no, it was. It wrapped up or wrong. Yeah. But, okay, there's but, a wound on on and again I because we can't figure it out. Yeah. Like it's there, there's literally a wound on her arm that was reported that was caused. Her dog dragged her. But, but it the dog was, dragged her. Did she wouldn't have a wound from her dog dragging her? That wouldn't happen. Like her dog pulled her. Her dog yanked her. Are we here to talk? It's clear that this is just an act of judging a big and it's not. It's not. I'm not saying you guys. I'm not saying you. And like I said, your decision, I can only hope that you make the best decision. And if you, whatever you do is your decision. I just don't, he's my pet. Like I, if he was dangerous, I wouldn't have him. I wouldn't have the, why would I have a dangerous dog in my home? I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a dangerous dog in my home. One more. One more, just, just one. Um, so just to your point, I don't judge pit bulls. One of mine is a pit mix and she's the most loving dog in the world. Um, but to Mr. Coronas' comment, and I think he was right in the money. You know, if I walk down the street and I say I'm afraid for my life, am I maybe embellishing a little bit? Maybe. But the fact that I might have still been scared is, is still accurate. And Mr. Coronas was absolutely correct in that it doesn't matter, it's a public way. If they walk their dog one way, and if you walk your dog one way, and a dog comes out over that fence, you should not be the one who says, I can't walk that street anymore. That, that's completely wrong. You should be able to walk freely on any street you want. You're absolutely right. You're so, absolutely I, right. I, so I agree with Mr. Cronus on that. They shouldn't have to walk the other way. They you're should be you're comfortable. You're absolutely right. I agree with you. So, I agree with you 100%. You're absolutely right. But if you're in fear of your life, you're going to walk back by the house with a dog. Your children, you're going to let your children walk back by the house where the dog supposedly attacked. But why would you let your kid? Walk back by the house. So, one common reference because this is important for context. If you look at a map, geographic map, you realize that relative to where we live, the safest route to walk is over their house. 
because the opposite way is brute strength. We live in Samsung Bro that becomes Steel Bro. So there I'm right, excuse me, that I'm going to walk 50 times a day on my case. That is the safest route rather than going towards the point. That is the reason why we didn't have to excuse that because, you know, it is our right to walk without being frightened as many times as we want down that, that street. I can tell you that at least I know that several of us did look at the neighborhood. We would ride by. Take, take. We have a just quick question to answer. Uh, for you to answer. So, and you may or may not know the answer to this. I don't. So the difference between declaring the dog a danger and declaring the dog a nuisance. If we declare the dog a danger, the dog is put down, correct? Yep. Or is it we have in town? It, it's, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Mr. Move from town? Nope. So what's the it's optimal to turn the dog in danger? From town. <laughs> I'm sorry. We have it seven it. different things that can be done if the dog is considered a danger. This is not the general law. They're very straightforward. So I'm going to read something just, just briefly. Just I'm going a little ahead of myself because we didn't close the hearing yet. But just so you know, what we're going to be looking for and what our options are, we can craft a decision tonight or we can take the matter on the advisement and vote to continue the hearing to another date and time. The board may make a decision based on the following options, disposal of the dog, which basically would be euthanizing the, the animal within 10 days, removal of the dog from the town within 10 days, continued restraint of the dog at the owner's expense as outlined in the board's order, or take no steps as a result of the hearing. Just, I know we don't, I, we deal with this, but we don't have this memorized. So I just hope that helps my peers. As we move forward now, did you have the question? Or was no, I make a motion. No. All right. No, I didn't say anything yet, and I'd like to make a comment. <laughs> First of all, again, thank everyone for being here, and, and I know this isn't easy, and this isn't easy for us, as we've all stated. I too am a dog owner. I, I too was bitten as a child, so I can relate. Trust me. What I don't like, I don't like excuses. You know, when I hear a clip is broken, when I hear a dog is chewed through wood. That's not the dog's fault. That that's us. The owner should be looking at our, our our surroundings for our dog and make sure everything's maintained because of things that can happen. So please, I you know, you. one yeah. and one of the things that I, I think it was Bill or maybe David or maybe both of you had said is you know, uh, and and maybe you know I believe in training, and it's more about training the person. <laughs> but it ultimately, if you're open to to training with your with your animal. Um, I am all for the muzzle. I think that's extremely important. And, and the other things you've done, I saw the pictures that you did to secure the fence. But uh, let me be clear too, in my opinion, it, people should be allowed to walk by your home without being fearful. You know, we have that, it, it's like, it just makes sense, right? So that's where I'm coming from. That's why I keep my, keep my comments very brief. Um, but now, I, any other comments? But so what we can do next, if we don't have any other questions, um, we close the testimony. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So I will now close the testimony and all questions. And then you can ask us the difference between nuisance and danger. Okay. Well, okay. Before we do that, then. <laughs> yeah. We can talk about that. Yeah. I'm not sure um, what the outcome is for either one. I mean, okay. either nuisance seems to me more like it would be barking or the dogs continuously okay. dangerous. dangerous to me sounds like it's it probably a step towards something else but right. at least at least a, yeah. putting a foot down so i'm going to close the testimony officially now it's 805 and uh, we now are deliberating so i know someone had a motion we can motion to second and then final discussion the discussion will only be for board members at that time, and then we will vote. So, can for you? Yep. So, in my history with these types of hearings, historically, as, as the chair so well stated, there are three options. One is to dismiss the complaint, meaning that, look, whatever happened, happened. Uh, at least for me, that's not an option. But then to select the singer's point, nuisance versus dangerous. Nuisance, historically speaking, has been there are let's just say less or um, perhaps more lenient uh, conditions would be would be put on. A dangerous dog, once so declared, for example, cannot be moved out of town. 
once you so a nuisance dog hypothetically i believe and i would invite and correct me could be adopted somewhere else a dangerous dog cannot be moved out of town for example so again i'm not saying that's what happened it's just for just for sake of conversation amongst the board because the thought is at least be a mass general law and, another town correct and cause so you're, you're basically giving that problem to somebody else so that being said um as Mr. Sanchez and others, I think have referenced that there are specific conditions that you can put on a dangerous dog that have been legally upheld via 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 mass statute. Whether it be insurance, whether it be uh, outdoor kennel, et cetera, there are very uh, prescriptive remediations that are often suggested. That's not to say there aren't other things that can get put on, but when we think around the delta between nuisance versus dangerous, I think that's one of the biggest keys. Is nuisance historically has been look. When you're walking your dog on the street, you always gotta, you know, make sure obviously as a leash, you know, put like a muzzle on it, etc. Dangerous dogs often are enclosed area, muzzle, insurance required. They're they're again very, very prescriptive things. So I think it's up to the five of us for us to decide which one of those three options we would want to pursue. Again, for myself, I'm not dismissing that complaint to be to be candid. And then it's just a matter of what level of conditions do we want to put on this because I'm putting conditions on this or at least going to suggest conditions to the board. Um, whether it's nuisance versus dangerous, to me it's half dozen of one, six of another. I would tend because, and again, uh, Ms. Weimer, I, I respectfully disagree with, with you on this one in that I believe that the dog, that, the, that your dog perhaps inadvertently injured the, in, injured the child. Um, I think it being a larger dog, if it actually meant to hurt the child, it would be a lot worse than it was. So that's why I'm being cautious on, on, on the words that I use. Uh, again, I think, you're, I think your dog's very dog aggressive. I think that the children, unfortunately, were harmed because of it. But I don't believe that your dog was purposely trying to attack a child. I do believe it was trying to attack a dog who, who happened then to injure a child, which is the part that I struggle with. So again, whether it's nuisance versus danger, I look at it to say, at a minimum, what I would expect is, quite honestly, that the dogs are muzzled, or the dog, I should say, the dog is, is muzzled at all times outside of the actual home. So whether it be the deck, whether it be whatever, that, 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 that there's always a muzzle on the dog. And that if, in fact, that's broken, then, then meaning that we find out via pictures or whatever, it's going to be a much different conversation. There could be additional things we could put on and ask for insurance purposes, for example. Uh, I believe that's subsection four um, of Mass General Law uh, under, you know, as, as you go down through this, under, under dangerous dogs, if, if, we, if the board decided to go in that direction. But now, I, I, I was one of the people that drove by your house, and I see that it is all fenced in. Now, one of the options is to actually take it a step further and say you could actually have to have a pen with, with a roof. That yeah, too. I agree with that. That's a wooden roof or something too. Uh, I that. think generally, as long as it's enclosed, yeah. Yeah, so it's okay. It's it's more around the around the flooring. If the if, if there is no metal floor or a floor to it, it's it, it's more design standards at that point. It has to be basically dug down two feet so a, a dog couldn't get uh, get underneath it. Again, I do not believe the dog should be should be euthanized at this point. Uh, that's just that's just me. But I'm I'm ready to. Put on very strict measures, and whether we consider that nuisance versus dangerous, I think it's half a dozen of one, six of an, six of, of another. But again, Mr. Weimer, pardon me, Ms. Weimer, Ms. Weimer, um, I'm not looking to put your dog down. I am looking to make sure that literally this never happens again. I'm going to take the muzzle, yeah. um, the pen in the yard, whatever yeah. you suggest. Um, what, I am the owner, so. so what I'm going to recommend, quite frankly, because I don't believe that you're willing that you are. Does that actually can I check out for you? Uh, would you be willing to give the dog up? No. I don't okay. know. Okay. Okay. okay, that's it. And, and, and that's more than fair. That being said, what I would make a motion, David, unless you already did, I'm sorry. No, I, I would make a point about your your one of your conditions though. Okay. Can I make a motion first? Bill, Bill, actually okay. before you do that, oh, again, I want everyone to be clear on if there's the difference between the nuisance and the dangerous. I know we talked a little mm -hmm. bit about it, but we're going to use that terminology. Yeah, we, have, we need to understand the consequences as well. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry for the chair. Do we have to yeah. declare a nuisance or danger? Is that something that we officially have to do? Yes. Yeah. Or you have to dismiss the complaint. Yeah. Or you, we, sorry. 
So, Mr. Chair, what I would, what I'm going to make a motion, at least for discussion, I hope for a second, is in that we that we declare Blue a dangerous dog, not to be euthanized at this point. However, that any time that the dog is outside of the immediate household, inclusive of the deck, outside the yard, walking on the street, in a park, regardless of where it is, that it have it have. I'm assuming it's a male. That that he have some type of muzzle on that will not allow him to open his mouth. One. Two, obviously, any time that he is outside of the Mary, uh, Mary's uh, that so that's one. So muzzle. Two would be any time that he's being walked. A obviously he has a muzzle on, but B he always has he's always chained. At, at, at the end of the day, uh, um, three would be. I'm going back and forth on this. Of I'm making cake of cake. yeah. Oh, do we want to actually? have an enclosed place in the backyard, knowing that the area is currently fenced in. That's the only one that I am currently going back and forth So on. you're talking like a, 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 a chain link kennel that has a vent that, or that, that, that has a roof. That has like the cover on it. Correct. And that would, that would at least give a, give a double security between them. So, I have, I have the whole deck fenced off now, eight foot high, too. So right now you just open the door and the dog goes on the deck and that's it. My concern is if it's another structure where you actually have to take the dog from point A to the to a pen, now you have an opportunity for the dog to get loose. And I know they should be muzzled, but just think of that too. Okay. And we can't, I guess we can do anything we can ask, but I think it's unfair to say that they have to put a thing on their deck. But I don't know. This is why, why, this is why we're discussing this. No, yeah, and so <clears throat> I, I don't personally want to go the, the insurance route. I think that'd be an onerous condition and, and unfair to them. Um, even the counting to put a, a burdensome finan you know, a financial burden that might, to, to, you know, at some point there's a line. And I think if they have an eight foot fence, could constitute, you know, the same kind of uh, restriction as, as the count because that, that's pretty high. Um, the dog's not adhered. Deer can clear ten. The dog's a little uh, legs are this big. Yeah. So that being said, I do mean if we're going to go that route, the muzzle, anytime, even on a deck that is not a house, to me, then would have to absolutely be a requirement because there's no saying, right? Accidents happen. You can have all the enclosures, all the fencing you want, but if someone leaves it open, well, it got out, well, it was an accident. I know what the idea is, we don't want another accident. So, and, and if this board decides to go the muzzle route, I will tell you if it helps, we did with our dogs, they're what they're called loose lead slick muzzles, they're muzzle trained. It goes over their mouth like a muzzle, but it's very loose. And if we lead them around with that, I guess them used to the muzzle. My dogs don't bite, we still did that. Um, we still bought those loose leads that go over like a muzzle to get them used to it. Um, I think that might be helpful if you're going to train a dog. If they decide to go the muzzle route, that would help them to train the dog to get used to having the muzzle on. Um, my dog, one of them was a pit mix, didn't mind it at all. But that gets you know, very loose and you get used to having something on your face uh, if the board goes that route. <clears throat> so then, I, oh, sorry, Steve. I do have one more thing to say. If, if, um, if, you, if both of you guys came here tonight with me, Offering solutions, this would be a lot easier for us. Like we can do this, we can do that. Quite honestly, we came here kind of blaming the victims. I feel like that's what they did to us. If you wanted to be, to but, be honest, but a child, a child, child was bitten. But just and and so if we put conditions on, you have to understand in your heart, in your mind, that you have, it's this is very serious. I, and I'm you not, have so you have to you have to understand that a mistake was made and the child was bit. You you actually said that you didn't think the child. No, was because bit. I didn't see. I I, wa I was watching him the whole time. That's why I'm saying if he if my eyes were not on him at all, then I could sit here and say, well, I don't know. And I'm like, I'm not. I don't have anything against them. I like, even know we're going through this right now. They're my neighbors. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I still don't hold anything against them. I really don't. Accidents happen, but I'm. I'm to be honest with you, I'm wishing that they felt the same way. And the way you're saying that we didn't come to your offer is I'm just feeling like they just want to jump to, oh, we want the dog using us. There's ways around it. It's an accident. Accidents happen. We are in the wrong. And I 
They're not, I mean, so like I said, I apologize, but I'm willing to muscle and do whatever it takes. All right, all right. So again, again, just to excellent. I appreciate your comments, but you're right, we did close. I know, but we kind of, but all right. So, so Karen, I'm sorry. So, so here's my motion one that we declare a dangerous dog. And really, what that means, it's really important that that that, that you all understand this and people in the audience, at least just for me. If the dogs run out and they're photographed in the street, my next step more than likely is gonna be putting the dogs down. And I don't wanna do that. Dog. So, dog, sorry, dog. And, and I don't wanna do that. So I'm begging you, really. We don't wanna see you again, really. I, that's, we don't, we don't like this, but we gotta protect everybody. We're trying to protect you, but I'm honestly, and I mean this, no, no offense, I'm, I'm more interested in protecting the neighbors right now, but we can't see you. So one that anytime the dog is outside of outside of the home, inclusive of the deck, your yard, or on the street, I don't care. If, if, if it's not inside your house, it has to have a blue. It has to have a muzzle on. If I say dogs plural again, I apologize. It's supposed to be just blue. Two, that uh, this is subsection four C three. That when removed from the premises of the owner, the premises of the person keeping the dog, the dog shall be securely and humanely muzzled again and restrained with chain or other tethering device. Have a minimum tensile strength of three hundred pounds and not exceeding three feet in length. Basically. You even take the dog in the front yard outside of that uh, fenced in area that you guys have. It's got to be on a leash. It's got to have a muzzle, and it's got to be a leash no longer than three feet. And the other one, walk through, can you, can you amend that one? Um, walk by an adult only. We don't want them. Yeah, I mean, we don't take them. We don't take them for a walk because I mean, basically, anytime that it's not in your fenced in yard, it's got to be on a leash and a muzzle. So yeah. next up, and, and this is, again, I, I know things happen, but you, but you all were delinquent, for lack of a better word, on the rabies certificate. We need to make sure that those are up. So I'm going to take it a step further and say, you have to send in medical records every single year to the town clerk and the board of selectmen and the animal control officers basically saying like, look, here's Blue's records. It's all good. This is so. This is sort of how this happened. I came down to get my dog license. Um, we had the whole Corona thing mm -hmm. outbreak. Well, to even get into a vet was like, oh, I get it. I can't get. I I actually had a foot for Friday for Blue, and I had talked to Ann, and she was like, Well, I don't even know about to go get him his vaccine right now until we have this meeting. So just yes. to, again, in, in, in fairness, I hear what you're saying, and. To, uh, seems like you had gotten your dog vaccinated up until that point. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if that's taking it too far with, because it's a tracking thing. I, I don't have the rest of the law. Right. All right. right. All right. I'll pull that one out. So for all intents and purposes, A, dangerous dog, B, uh, always on a muzzle. Anytime it's not in your fenced in area. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let, let me back up. Anytime it leaves your house, it has to have a muzzle on. And by house, I mean literally, if you, I'm assuming you have a sliding door or not, you know, but basically, however you get outside, the moment you open that door, dog has to have a muzzle on. Part two of that is if on the off chance you do take the dog out in the front yard for a walk on the street, obviously, um, muzzle always. And then B, uh, it, you know, no longer than a three foot um, leash. But this is the part, like I said, now that we're, de now that we're declaring it dangerous, if something happens again, there's a good chance that I'm gonna to motion to, to like put the dog down and I don't wanna do that. So please, I'm begging, don't make me do it. But that's- Is that, is that a condition? The um, euthanize, euthanize if the rules aren't called? Um, no, I don't think, no, I don't think that's, that's a condition, but that, but I, I will tell you that will be my motion if if this gets brought back in front of us. I'm just-, I'm just Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. Actually, actually, Steve's the clerk, if you run the so anyway, that that understand. is my that is my official motion because I think that will am ameliorate. I hope people in the audience knowing that there won't be another issue, and at the same time the owners are saying like there's not going to be another issue. But anyway, that's my official. Right, motion. So we have a motion. Can I second that? But I want to add one thing. So um, I know for, because I have dogs myself that my home insurance covers my dogs because I report that I have my dogs, um, and. A lot of times people don't tell their insurance that they have dogs because it's sometimes it's very expensive and I just want proof that in case something does happen and so the, the neighbors are protected that there is I'm not saying additional dog insurance that just that dog their dogs are covered under their home insurance policy. No, to, and Patsy I'm not sure if this has your thing but 
to your own benefit, by the way, because a friend of mine uh, no longer has his dog <laughs> or his insurance um, because their dog bit someone's daughter and they sued them over the bite and their insurance company, even though they knew they had a dog, when they found out once the dog bit someone, dropped them. They won't insure them. So you have to keep that in mind as well. You don't want to have your insurance company drop your home on insurance either. Because it's a dangerous dog, Subsection four says the owner or keeper of the dog provide proof of insurance in amount not less than $100,000 of insurance. Yeah, as long as it's, I mean, Whoa. I'm not saying they have to get an additional insurance because people do, as long as it's a, insured for that whatever amount under the, under their home insurance, and they'll have to provide evidence if, I mean, on there from, they'll have to get a letter from their insurance company saying that the dogs are covered. You guys good? But that's not my only concern. That's not my house. That's not my responsibility on homeowners. I'm a renter. Then, 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 then it will be renters' insurance then, whatever so it needs. Because if there's a lawsuit, if I'm sorry, to the chair, if there's a lawsuit, and um, say there's a lot of damage, say there is, say um, there's lots of medical bills. I'm not even the same like um, in, insurance for damage. But I go to the doctors, and now my co-payments are ten thousand dollars because I need reconstructive surgery. If there's no insurance, and um, the you know the dog owner doesn't have enough assets to cover that, then we're kind of not, we're not taking care of our, right. our residents. Patsy, so, to, to your point, I'll let you amend my motion and include subject four for those in the audience and you as well, uh, Ms. Herman That the owner or keeper of the dog provide proof of insurance in an amount not less than $100,000. Again, it doesn't mean you have to put up 100,000 because the insurance is. Ensuring the owner or keeper against any claim, loss, damage, or injury to persons, domestic animals, or property resulting from the acts, whether intentional or unintentional, of the dog, or proof that reasonable efforts were made to obtain such insurance if a policy has not been issued. Provided, however, that if a policy of insurance has been issued, the owner or keeper shall produce such policy upon request of the hearing authority or justice of the district court, and provided further that if a policy has not been issued, the owner or keeper shall produce proof of efforts to obtain such insurance. That is my amended motion. So there's three conditions now. Do you have any comments? No. I just, I had a general uh, quick question for, um, for Ann. What's the maximum fine we're allowed to impose for fine? So our fine is so uh, progressive. First offense for failure um, at Jersey Saxony, running a car, running at large, is 25 and goes to 35 the second time, it'd be 75 and 100 thereafter. And it's $50 for failure to register. Mm -hmm. And for incidents like this about the beyond, yeah, exactly. are we allowed to? No, we also have. Uh, uh, is there any state laws that restrict the amounts of those fines, or is that a town bylaw? I know, and correct me, state law is state laws, overrides. Yeah, state yeah. law overrides, and state law is $50 yeah. for failure to license. Yep. That's all, right. all when the bylaws of the town set their own receipts for. Yeah. Yeah. We have so just I know just thank you for that that's a housekeeping thing because we will be discussing process in the future um, we'll be, uh, as a future agenda item and I would like to revisit that in the, the yeah, just to answer you Karen I believe we also have a, a leash law which is dogs mm -hmm. out on the leash and that also uh, is in steps and the maximum for that is five hundred dollars I think the third offense is five no. Still the same, 25 first offense. And this was the first offense. Um, I go back year. and check. That was um, Bob Hartwig's motion at town meeting. I thought that passed. No, but so we'll, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll take a look. On after yeah. the other one. We'll, we'll, we'll talk yeah. about that in process. Yeah, anyway. We'll talk about that, but we will. That's, my, that's my motion. I'm hoping yeah. that that's three conditions. Oh, yeah. So, so first for Mary's sake, who will have to. First and foremost, it, 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 it's a dangerous dog, and I'm not going to go back to what that means. I think we all know now. One, muzzled at all times. To anytime it's not on like in, in your deck or basically in your fenced area, it's gonna be on, on a leash with, with, with muzzle. And then three, uh, this subsection four, which we I, you can actually have this copy if you like, um, that talks around uh, the insurance uh, component of it. Now whether it's rental, I mean again I'm not sure exactly how that will work being being being, being a renter, but there's a there's a bunch of in a sense subsections to this that I think will will answer your questions. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah what so again, that is my official motion. I officially second. <laughs> Any further discussion? Just the comment. I hope that we, the motion we're gonna vote on, I hope is, is, is the right solution, right? 
And I hope we're not wrong. I hope it's the right solution that enables you to keep your dog and to keep them and everybody else safe. Cool. And before I take the vote, I just want to thank everyone here. We have, for the most part, it was kept civil. Um, it's again, it's not easy, and uh, we all take this very, very seriously. And I hope that it came across. So thank you. And uh, now we'll call for a vote. All those in favor of Bill's motion, as stated earlier. Aye. 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 Motion carries. It's unanimous. Now there's a part of this because it's through a chair, because it's a dangerous dog. Now officially, Ann, I know that you're thinking you have to do some stuff with that, don't you? Um, yeah, reliable pasture from yard and check. Um, that's kind of the love we have. Well, that's gonna be my next issue because I'm gonna call the night tomorrow now that I know what happens here. To try and get another appointment with the next year gravy because I swear to put it off on Friday. Yep. So I don't know, that could be two weeks away. Last time it was in October or something. Like, it has been difficult. Yeah. A lot of people have called. Yeah, I think, and yeah. so, I think it's, as long as I think, and again, this is for Anne's responsibility, but I think Anne, is, as long as you can show her, look, we have the appointment set for the gravy shot. And yeah. promise Anne can see we have the appointment for the gravy shot. We have a bunch of set for the terms of and as far as the motion and the and we'll, I guess we'll get them a letter. Yeah. As I always have. If you want to appeal, you can too. So you know, yeah, I'll just guys. Yeah, so I'll caution you though. So we'll decide if they want to appeal for the chicken and garden dogs. And then they hope that the dog they, they that the board will change its mind. And we've seen this once someone appeals, they go to court to appeal the board's decision. The board can undo that decision. For right. now, that decision can be made to the judge. And what the judge rules, there, there, there is no coming back. From. There are no second chances. Right. And honestly, this probably, this probably not be a second chance enough. So really, I'm, 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 I mean, I'll, I'll say it again. I'm begging. Right. I'm going to comply with everything that's on the side. Right. Uh, again, thank, thank you, you uh, to everyone. Have a good evening. Stay safe out there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we are going to take a two minute recess. Yep. Eight, eight twenty eight. We'll be back by eight thirty. Yeah, yeah. All right, so yeah, let's... Uh, sorry. Thanks for the recess, by the way. No, thank you. <laughs> We're good? Uh, oh, come on, Noel. Sorry, sorry, I gotta get us ready. Did you just do this? Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah thanks for coming to the... I know this city sucks. Not... Actually, the meeting sucks, too, but I mean, the... Uh, like, yeah. Yeah, we, we need to break them up. I think you're doing a live for the recess. All right, people. Work on. Now our fans probably all left. <laughs> is, is that? Are we not live now? I, I just took us off live later on. You know, I'm not live. We're not live? No, we are not. We're about to be. We're about to be. Oh, we're we're about to be again. Cool. We, are, we are about to be live again, so don't say anything about that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Huh? <laughs> All right, so we're back. The recess is over. It is age 35. Again, this is John Lloyd's walking meeting, just in case you thought. We are going back up to number four appointments and resignations, notice of retirement by the police chief. We um, regrettably accepted this um, next field. And then we moved on to talk about a possible. Um, Appointment in term. So we're going to pick up that conversation. The reason why temporarily unmuted. The reason why we suspended it was we had to um, we had a hearing at 6:45 and we were already running late. So thank you for bearing with us and we'll pick up kind of where we left off. And I know we have um, up to now to see where this goes. Just a clarification. Yeah. My reference to interim, interim was obviously not 
for now since like we had to keep. Right, no, no, no. <laughs> was, sorry, that, that's a freaked me out. I'm sorry. I was like, oh, the, the reference to interim. Yes, good riddance. No, no. The, the, <laughs> reference, the reference to interim was should things go beyond a certain point when we find ourselves in that position? So we are, we are within our authority under appointments and resignations to do what I think you had suggested earlier. Um, so let's just pick up where we left off. And again, now we have, you know, you know uh, kind of get input. I'll do that. Or? Yeah. No, yeah, Karen, do you? Yes. And, and, and this shouldn't be better than Dan's kind of say. So a couple of quick questions. Dan, if you don't feel, you kind of if you don't feel comfortable answering this, please say no. First off, you would you, yeah, Dan, come down. Can you, you come on down? up there when you answer. You are the least political command staff. <laughs> so why don't you introduce yourself, please, and welcome. Thank you, and thank you for being here this evening. Yeah, let me ask you a very straightforward question. Are you interested in becoming the next chief of police of the town of Charleston? I am. Okay, thank you. But like, believe it or not, that was the only question that I, I actually had. Okay. That I don't being, believe you didn't believe me. I don't So that being said, I think you need to go one of two directions. For board harmony, if it makes sense to what I would say is I am only interested in internal candidates. And it's obvious, again, I'm not going to go into it much more, but obviously I think second in command would be in that succession. That being said, if it if, if, if it's board harmony that we're looking for. <clears throat> Um, if, if we are interested in a letter of interest from any internal candidates at the at the sergeant level or above who would be interested in applying for a police chief, I would be I would be happy to to put this off. I, I would prefer to actually have this finalized next Tuesday. I hundred percent agree with you. Okay. Through the chair. So. So then we put the posting up for seven days. I wouldn't even post it. Meaning legally, if it's a promotion. And I, I ask Andrew to correct me. Legally, if it's a if, it, if it's a promotion, which if we're, if we're assuming internal candidate, regardless, we would be a promotion. You do not have to post it. Sorry. I have a question. I'm sorry. Yeah. So this is just I'm just saying interim. I'm saying that we we say anybody who's interested in doing the interim, and the next week we decide, and then we get. We don't need interim. Interim. We're not going to do that formal process. I think and, you and is it dangerous not to? I think we're trying to avoid it. So I think to your point, we avoid the interim and actually pass you. I think we actually, I think personally, in my opinion, is following this process. It actually helps morale because we're showing our, our, our department and our officers that we believe in them. We don't want to go outside. We want to promote from within. We want to have succession. We want to give other officers the opportunity to take lieutenant's tests and sergeant's tests and chief tests. And I think, if anything, this shows that we're putting our faith in that department, right? That you're going to have a new chief, regardless, and then you're going to have to have either a new lieutenant or a new sergeant, depending on what you decide, which creates opportunities from within, right? So this board has every right to go outside. We go outside for chief lieutenants, mm -hmm. officers, but we're choosing not to. And I think, personally, the one again, I'll go back to one of the reasons we went through this entire process was to allow us to do this right now, um, and to take that action. And then begin working on a, on, on a new succession plan, which would be to begin all the research and all the proposals and all the RFPs and how to do that for that but one for the police chief. That's a lot of work and that's time consuming too. If, if, if Dan Down becomes the next chief, uh, I would recommend immediately that we begin the process of, a, of, a, of, a, of an assessment center, which we've gone on, which is very effective. But that takes time. And we may have a lot of patrolmen and sergeants who, who want to become a lieutenant next as well and, and continue moving up internally, showing that we're going to do everything we can to have that, that succession internally and always promote from within, preferably. Which here, just a quick thing. Only because, Dan, this might be uncomfortable. Dan, you, I mean, unless we want Dan, we can take off. I mean, I'm, 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 unless you want to hang out. The only thing I would say is I'm very confident the talented people that are in Charleston are going to explain and certainly not as much as I can. But it's just a question of, you feel comfortable with me being behind the wheel for a period of time to confirm the important process and see if we go from that point. But by no means am I saying that there's not other talented people at the Charles mm -hmm. Department, or certainly if they put in that position, we're do well as well. Well, Lieutenant Dodd, you, you didn't say that, and you actually were uh, steering behind the wheel uh, for all the months that Chief Mackey was the interim TA, and you ran the department basically as chief all that time, and also, to Bill's point, kept us out of the paper. 
So, uh, and, and all that time while we were on the board, an exceptional job as the chief uh, when he was out for the month's SPA. Right, so, to answer to your question, to your question before around, around interim, honestly, just for me, I'm not looking for an interim unless necessary. I would fully expect that, at least my hope would be that either basically a member of the command staff, again, Sergeant Jabal, would be the next chief of police in the in, 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 in permanent chief of police in the town of Charleston. All, I suppose, in the absence of, again, I had hoped, you know, potentially we could even, again, I, clearly I'm showing my hand, and I have shown my hand that, I, that I'm supporting the doubt that the next chief. Can I, yeah. I, no, no, I, no, I get it. agree with you 100%, 100%, 100%. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a process person, and I just don't want anybody externally yep. questioning the way we do things. And that's why I say, anybody who's interested in being appointed interim, then you make that decision. Send your, send your letters and let us know. I'm sorry. But, but, but it's so just, I want to clarify, you, you, when is Chief Max's last day? October 3rd, I believe, October 5th. So we have Maybe a police chief so till we technically month. have a month to decide. Um, Correct. So then, so then, we, so instead of me saying interim, so anybody who's internal, internal, I believe internal, one hundred percent. I don't want to go out. Right. Um, Let's figure out where where like we all agree. So are we all saying interim? Yes. Preferably. Yeah. I'm not even disagreeing with no, the person. No, no. I'm just saying we have to give everybody internally the opportunity to apply for this position, and if it's only a week, then it's only a week. If we set the rules, we set the rules. Mm -hmm. So by by next week, we get resumes and letters of interest, and we we have the up and, we, and then we um, look through them. I mean, we know many of the internal candidates already. We know their accomplishments and everything else. So if we could have that in front of us, um, maybe before, maybe give us a day or two to look at them before our next meeting. Then I'd be ready. How about for the board Hold on one second. I know we defer. I'm going to ask our town administrator for a recommendation regarding we wanted to go that route. What kind of timeline? I would recommend a week so that, or I would recommend doing it at your next regular meeting just for the opportunity of posting it for a week, getting the information and getting it out to the board. And for clarity purposes, and um, in case you weren't with us when I went through the agenda earlier, our next regular meeting is September 22nd. So, as much as I'd like, Andrew, if that's the case, I'm either in a motion now or next week. We don't have that time, we don't have that luxury. But, like, there's no, what's, we, we can just open up and have, but we have a finance. Committee meeting, right? A joint? That's, so the joint meeting with um, FinCom is Wednesday, September 16th. It is an option, but I'm hearing we don't think that's on time. I, I'm just concerned that anybody who's might be interested might want to just take a day to think about it and put their get their stuff together. Yeah, I think it's just few, unfair to say you have a day to think of whether or not you want this. Is she have a special meeting next Thursday? I mean, it could be Zoom if people can't come and so, do it quickly. Yeah, I, I, I just want to, I, I, I know I'm complicating things, I'm sorry. I just think that we need to give everybody the opportunity to apply that, that more internally. So I, and I, do, and I do, I do agree. So I, I'm going along with the, the town administrator because I don't think that's, I think it gives enough time for the candidates to apply for the position. It, it's, it's, it seems like a fair, Practice process. We have the chief here in the meantime. It's we like know you're, you're interested. Thank you for letting confirming that. Um, I just say one thing. Sure. Just for clarification, uh, with the chief leaving, it makes sense to put somebody who will be in charge effective that, that day. Things could change in the meantime. You could select another person as chief, you could select me as chief, whatever you do. Mm -hmm. but you should know who's going to be in the end. I'm going to take care of that. Then I'll take care of that next time. So the, the point being the interim, so if that's I what I was to, to the chair, that's what I wanted to get this. Oh, like that. So, so if I may do the chair, Master, you're, you're not making things complicated. My big issue is it's not only what's best for the town, and but what's fair for the for the officer, but also for the new chief. I, I personally believe if we were going to say, hey, we're having a, a chief test, or a shock sorry, a sergeant's test, a lieutenant's test. Tomorrow, where you have one day to think about if you want to take the test or we're wanting to prepare for the test, you couldn't do that. That would be completely unfair. I think if you're a police officer and you're a patrolman, you know if you want to be a sergeant, you know if you want to be a lieutenant, you know what your desire and what your ambition is. You don't have to take a week or even three days to decide what my ambition is. You know, I know I want to be a chief, I don't want to be a chief, I want to be a lieutenant. You, you know, 
Um, we wouldn't want to put anyone in an unfair position where they don't have to prepare for an assessment center or, or, or a test. Um, but you kind of know if, if you want to go, if you want to work your way up the ranks. Um, that I think is one thing. So I don't, I don't agree with the need to give people days in, in a week to decide if they want to actually advance their career. They know. I don't care if they decide, but they can provide the resume. Sometimes people don't have an up to date resume in their in their back pocket. Sometimes people have to create one. So that's right, but that, but that, but to your point, but that doesn't take days. And I think the timing thing, which I was trying to get to the long way, um, is that. We don't really, again, have the luxury of time. If you want to give a new chief the opportunity to spend some time with the outgoing chief, knowing they are the chief, and go through a transition so that everything is smooth, you would like that person to be able to potentially start before the new chief leaves. If we put this on for a week, that Andrew's point, and then we go a week from there, it's never going to happen. It's just, it will never happen. The new chief will have zero time to retire. They want to retire internally, though. So they, they will have an opportunity to kind of know that anyone. Well, they won't because if, if, if Lieutenant Dow is the next chief and he knows that a week, two weeks before Chief Maxfield leaves, then he'll have a week or two to prepare and spend extra time with Chief Maxfield. If it wasn't Lieutenant Dow and it was one of the sergeants, then they would should have that week or that two weeks time because they haven't had that luxury. They should have that time with Chief Maxfield. So, oh, you're the next chief? You should have time with him. They're not going to get that. And if we put it off, you're gonna wind up with a new chief going day one is going, this is great. I've had no time with my predecessor, so there was no transition. I hope I don't drown. You know, I mean, I just think it's, it's important that we don't put that off. And I think we should, if anything, if we if we walk out of here tonight with a motion and a vote, then we should at least walk out of here with a timeline that says we're gonna agree to have this decision made by this date with negotiation by this date and announcement by this date, ensuring that whoever that candidate is, is decided, negotiated, and done a week before October 3rd. May I suggest a compromise? So first and foremost, let me make the first motion to say that if on the off chance that we do not have a police chief as of October 3rd, that Lieutenant Dowd will be acting chief until until that changes. Is that a motion? That is a, that is a formal motion. Second. Yeah, okay. I mean, discussion. That's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we should have voted on that. All right, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now, my second motion is that I, I'm trying to, again, I'm like hearing both sides, and again, just trying to be reasonable to, to promote forward harmony. That I think a week is, is fair. Um, what I would recommend as a compromise amongst the five of us with much very, very different views is that we ask starting tomorrow for any against sergeant internal sergeant and above to submit a resume and letter of intent or letter whatever you want to call it, basically to us by end of day friday and that we conduct interviews on on next tuesday night assuming the board can call a special meeting if people are available and that we actually more hopefully we can vote that evening after interviews and after whatever else that we need, all the information that, 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 that are required, that we can vote as, as of end of business day Tuesday to enter in negotiations with a candidate, whoever he or she is. So to that point, if you were gonna do that, A, it has to be public, interviews have to be public. Yep. You would have to have questions agreed upon by every board member in advance and ensure that every single candidate is asked the exact same question. Mm -hmm. There can't be any variation. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, it's, when you go down that route, it's not I mean, it, it could be a one, it could be a, do you need to, you just need three board members? And we can figure it out if we need to. I, again, I would prefer all five of us be available just because this is now a C-level executive that we're, that, 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 that we're going to put in. So we should have, even if we don't agree on the choice, we should all have, have a say. So Karen, who are you? Is everyone available on Tuesday? I'll make myself available. Anyway. I'll make myself available. No, okay. it just, it just well, took the finance committee. That was on Thursday. No, that's Wednesday, oh. I believe. Oh. What, what's the name? Which one? Uh, Wednesday, oh, September 16th is finance. So this would be Tuesday the 15th. Okay. Well, but what I'm hearing, correct me if I'm wrong, is tomorrow is the 9th. So we oh. want people to submit their resumes by Friday. Friday, Friday. Not, oh, oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, just say by email. Yeah, okay. 
that way. I have intent I'm, slash resume, whatever. Just we so so we give all internal candidates that are eligible that you know are sergeant above sergeant above the opportunity to let us know that they're interested, so we can review resumes and whatever to make our decision. I'm I'm just trying to make this as as. Yep. Are we going to interview everyone who puts their name? I bet, I don't think we need to discuss that right now. Don't we need to get through. Well, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Karen. I'm actually assuming, uh, uh, under my my idea for lack okay, of yeah. for discussion, that we would actually have interviews potentially on Tuesday and hopefully make a decision Tuesday evening as a compromise between following following due process with a certain amount of um, efficient due process. Yes, and but at the same time, knowing that we are somewhat time constrained because you know with 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 the non interim issue uh, with like Chief Max would leave in, in like early October. This way, we get letters of interest in. It yeah. gives people the chance, but then we can also hopefully make a determination to make. Right. I mean, I'm sure we can rule people out or in based on resume, based on experience, based on you know whatever. We can figure out the who we need to give um, interviews to, and we can make it work. All right. So, with, with all due respect to every single one of you sitting around this table, mm -hmm. is this should we have other people? I mean, is this the best practice? What what normally occurs? You know, five select people interviewing. I'd say it's our choice, so I would say yes. I, I agree with Bill. And again, I go back to the entire reason we went down this road was for this reason. I think again, I go to I go down to the point there's more to it than that. So, out of fairness to every officer in the department, we also have to let them know whether to start preparing and studying for an assessment center or test. We're not really decision. worried about preparing or studying, right? It's, well, it's, no, they need to happens, prepare for that. that on the 16th, 15th, on the 15th, are you qualified and ready to step in at that point? For the chief's it. position, correct. For the chief's position. For everybody for else's promotion, everybody else's that's tasks and everything else, is there. Right, but the minute you have, let's say, let's just say the minute you have a lieutenant to point you, now you have to schedule an assessment center. The officers have to have a fair amount of time. Just, you don't just go in and take that. That's exhausting. You have to prepare. Let's say it was a, um, Lieutenant test, I think that's uh, not even valid anymore. The list you have to have them either the assessment center if it was a sergeant, so kind of that list is valid. They got to study and take a test. Does that prevent us from choosing a chief on? No, 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 no. So what I'm saying is it's a domino effect. So whatever piece you move, you also have to prepare to move the other pieces and to give every officer in that department a fair chance to study and prepare to also move up right behind. Andrew, do we? Do we are we can if we choose a if we choose a chief on Tuesday? Are we prepared to do all the other things that David says that we that gives you time? Around? It all falls. Oh, okay, so then that's then that's not. Then it's all not going to happen before the end of the month. Oh no no no! Right. no. All I make, all we care about is getting a chief, right? <laughs> I'm just going to make a motion, just to make it formal, just to help this poor character unless you feel a lot better. That I'm going to make a motion that we call a special meeting for for, for next Tuesday night to interview candidates for the next town of Charleston police chief. And the only people who are invited to apply, and the only thing we need for application, as far as I'm concerned, are resume and a letter of interest. Um, Agreed. And I would like them by end of day Friday, 5 p.m. Friday. And that anyone who, who gives their name, as far as I'm concerned, if it's the only thing on the agenda, we can we can, we can can interview everyone. So, and, then, and then my goal at the end of that evening would be to make a motion, whether it be, for to to hire to op, to enter the contract negotiations with our next chief of police. I love it. Second, so, I so second. Record, they should go. The emails need to be sent to Andrew, and then after five p.m., he can disseminate the resumes to the members of the board and the letters of interest, so that we can read them and digest them. Assuming assuming the five of us are available to they I'll make it work. Make it work. Like six thirty or whatever that. And we can do we can do group interviews, right? We can have whatever if there's more than one, we can just generally you want to have so I'd rather be independent, that's just okay. me. You don't want one listening to somebody else's answer to the other. You want to keep them separate here. Even even though it's not working. So that being said, that's well, why that, that's my motion. Whether we start at six or six thirty, I can do either way. It's really upon the convenience of the of the board. And if you have more than one candidate, you'd have to have them here they get in a room where they can't see the TV, so they can't hear the other answer. Any headphones that blind them? Well, we did that with yeah, the separate so I mean, you have to kept them separate. So anyway, interview. Anyway, anyway, that, anyway that's, that's my motion. That's perfect. I second that. All right, and I go back to my question, and Andrew. Just so it's all it's just us. I'm assuming the TA. 
Do we need anyone else? You have all the most brilliant minds in this room. So. I better leave them. <laughs> yeah. If we can reach, I would like to think that between all the very qualified sergeants we have, and 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 as you said, as far as that there is a that there, there, there is a majority of the board, i.e., three votes that we can eventually agree on. I absolutely that, agree. That, that, that one of those three. I don't so. think there'll be any. I think it'll be a thirty-second vote. Okay. All right. So, so anyway, the, anyway, the chair, that, that is my official. Right. We, we had a motion. We had a second. Yes. Yes. Second. It's like deja vu here. All right. <laughs> I'm not hearing discussion, so we're going to vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair both sides. So, yep. Mr. Chair, what I would recommend is via Andrew, and just Thank because you. Dan, since you've done interest, what I recommend, Andrew, can you reach out to Max, let him know what we said, and we need info by end of day Friday. Bye. But beyond that, any 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 officers watching, be ready for Tuesday. Tuesday. For Friday, be ready for Friday. Yeah, I mean, this one comes out next day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's probably thinking I should have been on the show. should have said no when yeah, he asked. You know what I mean? Do you want to increase cheek? No. Now I see something. <laughs> Thanks, LT. All right. All right now, see, again, it's all about comedy. Yeah. A lot of heavy lifting. We all want the same We're thing. Well, well. Oh, yeah. We have different ways to get there. It's all good. It's all good. All right. All right. All right. So ready? Now, One time. All right. This is not a problem. We're moving on down. Uh, new business. We don't have anything on new business. Right, that's not a typo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. I have nothing on that one. All right, and now we're on old business, the town council proposals. Yeah. Um, Hold on, I'm sorry, go ahead. So at the uh, board's last meeting, there was discussion on town council proposals. The question arose um, regarding whether or not the discussion would take place in executive session. I had a couple of examples that were involved in executive session. Uh, as directed, I sought council's opinion, and you find that um, he reviewed the video of the board's uh, meeting that night, and uh, so I need to better understand the question of what was being asked. If you hear nothing in the discussion that would qualify for a closed session, whether he said that his office is not involved in any ongoing litigation. If there is any discussion that needs to happen with respect to litigation strategy regard, regarding one ongoing litigation matter, an attorney from the other proponent is handling. It's difficult to convene that such a discussion would need to be made in the context of this block or if we do so the board would run the risk of an open meeting while Okay. All right. Take it away. Madam Chair. I mean, I don't care who goes first. I was on for it. You guys go first. I'll flip the board. Right, you know what, if you, if you don't mind, I'm going to start over here. Yes. You two gentlemen have been speaking a lot. Not that we don't have to show No, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine deferring. I would actually, I would, I, I would prefer to. But everyone will have their turn. I'm good. Okay. Steve, do you have anything to say on this matter? I, I don't. I reviewed both proposals in detail. They're, they're both good proposals. There are pros and cons on both sides. I'd like to hear the discussion. Mm -hmm. Back and um, I agree that Chelsea is a growing town. There's a lot going on. We have so much development on Route 20 and so many other things. Um, you know, oil spills and everything else you could possibly imagine in our town. Um, and we need to have a firm that um, that can provide all inclusive services. I feel like we outsource so many. We have to go outside of our town council so often, probably more often than not. And I feel like the um, Mayor O'Connell has um, pretty much specialists in every area. So all of our business would be uh, taken care of for the most part um, with one firm. And we dealt with them um, in the professionalism and, and the timeliness and the short, quick answers um, makes sense to me. So that's Okay. Um, so, yes, I've, I've gone over the proposals as well. I don't think there's any question as to the uh, qualifications of the firm. They're both quality. Um, I will say they own multiple firms, right? They've all done work for the town in various capacities. Um, however, to me, there, there is, are, are two very big differentiators. Um, I'm less concerned with the, the efficiency of one law firm than I am with the best. And looking at the, the, the proposals, there are two areas to me that in all, in all frankness aren't even remotely close. Um, Attorney Cosgrove's uh, 
institutional knowledge of the, of the event. Um, the who's, what, where's, when, how's, why's, history. Um, the other proposal, the other firm, as good as they are, as quality firms they are, they could just simply do an offer. They can't. They, they can't. And as far as the cost of the town, it's actually not close. It's 70 to 75 dollars per hour less than our current council who's done an impeccable job. Um, he represented the town very well. It's like a 70 to 75 dollar hour difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. It was significant. It's a significant cost difference. So I think it was 40. Yeah. To me, uh, did you check on anything? It was like around 70 dollars difference. Well, and the proposals are online. Yeah, so public, the public first. can see as well. But the even honestly, if it's seventy, if I'm wrong, it's forty. Uh, my apologies. Forty dollars an hour is still a significant difference when you bill out hourly for all the hours for the work done. So whether it's forty or whether it's seventy, it, it, no matter how you slice it, that's a significant difference. That's a significant cost to the taxpayer to get a new law firm. That does not have that institutional knowledge. And I will say, as someone who's on this board and has worked with Attorney Castro, I've never met a lawyer with his level of integrity. You know, we don't hire lawyers to do what we want, we hire them to do what's best. We don't hire them to tell us what we want, we hire them to tell us what we have to hear, what we need to hear, whether we like it or not. And he's always been truthful, open, and honest, and he's always done what's best for this town, period. And, and that being said, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make a motion that we reappoint attorney Costco over to town council. I don't even think it's remotely close. Nothing against Mr. Tom, great firm. But but these this is apples and oranges. Did you want I, I wanted to give you a chance to actually speak. Well, yeah. So when you make a change in staff, there are primary reasons why you do it. One is financial. Let's start there. I think we all agree, having read the proposals, that even if we tweak the numbers being, i.e., paralegal versus legal services, full legal legislation versus whatever, um, that uh, attorney cost bill comes in uh, cheaper. Let's just let, let's just call it that. So I immediately cross that off as a reasonable change. So financially speaking, especially under the retainer model, that may actually behoove us to pursue that regardless, because it allows us the opportunity to basically say, look, no matter what, it's going to be this much, and then it's going to go, I think, with like 165. So I think from a financial perspective, for taxpayer money, it makes sense. That being said, I also agree that legal services should not be provided based upon cost, because you get what you pay for. Um, so the second part of that is, you know, to select like my second point, it's around institutional knowledge. Cosgrove and Glad have, you know, represented the town for multiple, multiple years. I mean, Jim, you can ask a question to, and he'll think back, and he'll, and, he, and he'll have all the records going back 10 or 15 years of, well, here's what happened, here's why, and, and like here's my record. So again, this is not, this is not an indictment of merit at all. I think they're fantastic attorneys that we've been past. I can't say nothing because they are. Um, the third part is overall success rate. Reviewing what the proposals, when, when Cosgrove does have to litigate, they're almost always successful. When those opportunities have not been successful, often, as we all know from different boards and with attorneys, <laughs> it's often because they're following direction from the board down a, down, a, down a path. So that's the other piece, that attorney Cosgrove has never gone down, he's never gone rogue. Anything that he and his firm has ever done has been directioned by the TA and or a majority of the board of selectmen. So when you do that type of comparison, again, this is not an indictment whatsoever against Mary, because I think they're fantastic lawyers. Just what is the overwhelming desire or my overwhelming optics to say, yes, we should make a change, and here's how I can justify it to the taxpayer. Literally, I mean, outside of passage your point, I mean, you know, Mayor is a lot bigger, so they have, you know, more resources available. But outside of that, every other check mark goes to Cosgrove and Black. So I would echo uh, Selectman Singer if, if he would make a motion around reappointing Cosgrove and Black. You're unmuted, I don't know. For all of those reasons. So if that was a formal motion, that was a sudden motion, then I will second that second that motion, at least at, at least for discussion. But okay. Karen, you can speak that, so I'm sorry. Yeah. That's why I was no, sorry, because we have a we have a motion. Right. You can see you. Who needs to mute? Andrew. Sorry. <laughs> Coming off mute. Um well, Steve, did you have, now that we've heard some discussion, you didn't say much. Did you want an opportunity to express your point? I 
there, there are, there are, um, I believe it's more like $48. That's significant. Huh? That's a significant amount. Yeah, no, of course, it's especially out of all the, all the hours in the year. I, um, I don't have a whole lot of experience with Tonto outside of just watching it over the last few years. You guys know better than that. I haven't really seen anything that I've thought that outside of maybe being led down the road just by, um, by a PA or um, selecting at that time. Outside of, outside of that, I don't, I don't know if I really have a problem with it. Miracle Carnival, yeah, they're top notch. They're so, so expensive there. So, uh, 20% so you I mean we do have to invest in life. If, if it's if it's time if we, if we think they can do it quicker and, and, and the annual amount of money that we spend on the committees is not the same then we sure we can if I may I'd rather have it done right than quicker. Um but we've had that so and to to your point though Steve having dealt with attorney Connor for for many years I think you'd obviously, I think you'd honestly be hard pressed to find a, 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 a finer person with more integrity. Um, and he's never failed to represent this town in a very positive way. And he really truly cares about this community. Um, and that, that's where, where my vote lies, which is why I made that motion. Um, and I'll also just put out there, you know, sometimes change is good, but it's also, I think, dangerous just to change for the state sometimes mm -hmm. and I think this is one of those times where the town is best served by keeping our current town before uh, do you have anything else you have to ask you? I would love to say something but I'm scared to say something I, <laughs> that's okay. why I wanted to go in executive but um so so in, very good so before I, I make a couple of comments I didn't know if the PA had any input in your walk because I know you've dealt with before firm, but again, I don't want to put you on the spot, but that's <laughs> what you get for being a TA. <laughs> I know. Uh, no, I, I would say I've experienced uh, with Paul, um, you know, in my, my experience dealing with different councils from different towns, it's about dealing with, you know, the council, the, the right council for the right, um, for, you know, for the right, yeah, issue that's going on. You know, if you try to, you know, use a labor specialized attorney for general counsel, you know, you, they're going to have a lot more difficult time keeping up with it versus if you use a labor attorney for, for labor issues. Um, that's just, you know, the way that I operate, and, you know, so, you know, having, having a general counsel with historical knowledge of what's going on, I think is very valuable. Um, but for, for the specialized litigation issues for, you know, reach out for, for specialized counsel, that's, that's my, my personal view on, on the use of counsel. So use that as a, as you made your decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you need anything? All right. Let me, I'll be, um, so one of my main issues is, and I know you guys are going to shut me down, but I'm going to start and you can shut me down if you want. Don't make me use this password. <laughs> so <laughs> when, when, um, when we had the issue with our TA, and years ago, a TA's salary was was zeroed out and we had lawsuits it was a big issue and then we hired and then we paid Cosgrove to put a, um, a little addendum into our contract saying if, if this ever happened again we get a 50 percent salary payout and that was it so we paid an attorney to write up that contract so we would protect the town and then years later it happens again and um and to be honest half of the salary would have been much cheaper than the, 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 the final payout. And we did have Cosgo advise us for the, for the last issue that we had. And what the, the agenda that the, the section of the contract that he wrote didn't, it was like he, he worked, it didn't work that many years later and it cost the town a lot of money. Um, and I have a problem with that. I, I, had, I had gone to many of my personal um, attorney friends and said, all right, I want to do this, but am I putting the town at liability? Because I might be open mouth and I might be, you know, I, I might not have that filter, but I'm I'm an auditor and I, everything I do is is a based on liability. So I didn't go to town meeting and make a motion because I didn't know what I was doing. I 
know well now, I'm like, bro, well, laughing at your And I said, don't make me look like an idiot. Um, and then I was caught down and, and we heard, you let me get sued, you let me get sued, this is bad. Well, if we paid the attorney to write a contract to protect us and then it didn't work, whether it was a relationship, a personal relationship with our CA, or whether it was we, we truly did something wrong, I don't, it just seemed like it didn't work. Um, and a little bit, I lost a little bit of respect for that, that like, it, it, it's like when that happened, the town wasn't being protected anymore, that the TA was being protected. And he doesn't work for the TA, he works for the town. Um, and that's my main issue, my, my, so, my main, I mean, there's other instances, but I'm not gonna go to personal stuff. I'm just saying, there's, that's just an instance of an example of why I think we just need some new blood and somebody who um, understands a lot of the new social media stuff and just is just more in tune with all the many changes that are that are happening in the world now. So if, if I may, Madam Chair, so so Patsy, I understand that is your perception because you weren't in a lot of those meetings. What I can tell you with 100% certainty is perception. Your perception is not reality. It's not your fault. You weren't in the meetings. You don't know. But what I can assure you is there was never a relationship there. There was never an attempt by an attorney to protect the town of state. And I have to be careful too because we don't want to break any laws. But what I can tell you is in those circumstances, to Bill's point, Attorney Conoco only ever did what the board directed him to do. And even in those executive session meetings, he cautioned the board on actions to take and not to take to protect the town without question. And there's not a doubt in my mind I was in those meetings. He's never ever betrayed the town of the town, not in those meetings either. And he didn't. And what happened in that meeting and what happened in the outcome of those decisions and actions had nothing to do with Attorney Conoco whatsoever. Not in the least. So I'd like to say something. And it's not easy. I am familiar with Attorney Cosgrove very well. Respect him, highly respect him, worked with him. Um, I echo some of what Patsy had said as far as the town, the growing needs of the town. I, you know, what is in the best interest of the town on our sides with the different challenges that's on the horizon that's all relatively new. Things like, you know, we've been dealing with the solar with marijuana, with things go on and on and on. Um, I think it's really important that we have someone, um, and, and like I think you had mentioned, when you have a firm that has so many, many people right on staff that you can access time in a timely manner. I think that's very, very important. Um, I think, again, I think Attorney Cosgrove has been very good as far as being proactive with some of his uh, suggestions and recommendations, but Moving forward, I don't know that that is what's best. And I always go back and say, you know what, looking looking at everything, costs and efficiency, um, access to other talented, you know, lawyers, time. Going on my past experiences, which I can, you know, again, I can't get into certain things because for obvious reasons, but. Uh, based on all of that, um, I am leaning towards voting no, even though I may be in the minority. And it, it's it's almost painful, <laughs> quite honestly. But no, it, no, I'm basing this on what I believe to be my, you know, the interpretation of what I have experienced and what I have witnessed at town meetings, what I have witnessed and heard through, you know, different recommendations. Again. Always, you know, this is not, which, you know, again, Attorney Cosgrove is always in his heart of hearts. I, I think he's, you know, he's, this is in the best interest. Even, I, I think, one thing I can cite is the recommendation with the, um, the thing at the town meeting, Facebook, social media. Um, that could have, if all of that, and I know it was, it was offered by the town employees or whatever, but with his, you know, it was overlooking it. But I do think. If that would have moved forward, that would have, in my opinion, could have opened up the town for different problems. So again, based on my 
experience. That's and it's it's not easy, but that's that would be my recommendation. Where this town is, where this town's going, what this town needs. And so yeah, that's why we all it's it's not an easy night, is it? So Madam Chair, <laughs> if I may, you, you mentioned things like cost efficiency, knowledge capability. Attorney Thomas go and check off every single one of those lots. Every single one. And I, and I will tell you, I'm glad this meeting is televised because there's not one mitigating reason to be sitting tonight to make a change. And how many times have I heard the process is not supposed to be? It's, it's I'm telling you what my opinion is. And I can almost guarantee it's shared by a lot of people who are watching this meeting. There's not been one genuine reason given to change. Now, Attorney Cosgrove, that town meeting, or a second meeting, he doesn't vote. He has no vote. He didn't vote to do anything. Town meeting attendees, they vote. That's the town's legislative body. They vote. He gives advice. How many times has town meeting ignored that advice? Plenty. Followed it? Plenty. How many times has the board of selectmen followed that advice? Plenty. Ignored it? Plenty. It's never the attorney's fault. They give the advice. We make those decisions. Not the attorney. He's given good, solid advice every time. Town meeting can vote however they want, regardless of what he says. He never did anything other than give advice. It's always been solid. Yeah, David, it's again, let's make it very clear. We're not getting into it. This is not anything personal. It's no. all so we, we have our opinions on that. We, we differ on that greatly. Right? So Madam Chair, just one, one more question about it. Um, what I will say is somewhat echo of what's been saying today is that I want a conservative attorney. I want someone who is going to keep the town out of trouble, who's not going to be aggressive and want Again, I'm, this is, I, I, I want to be careful to, to make sure the big asterisk. I'm not saying merits like this at all, but just in general, what I look for in, in, in council is concerned advice that will protect the taxpayer. It's like I say, your point, the board of selectmen are the final determiners of contract agreements, of signing off on anything. Town meeting votes are done by town meeting voters. Town council can give advice and guidance, but he or she never takes a vote. It's up to us to either ignore that advice or accept it. Since I've been on the board, Jim and I have had a couple of disagreements on certain things, but I respected his advice because I think it helps the town and it's always helped the town. I think if we change tonight, for right or wrong, perception is, is going to be that this is a personal thing. I'm not saying it is, I'm not accusing anybody of it, but the perception is going to be that this is simply a personal well, yeah, I will I will say this. I, I absolutely disagree with you. Everyone is on, you know, we're expressing our opinions. We can't control how, or what people think, but we are, I, I am certainly not, this is not personal. This is based on, again, decisions that I've, I have witnessed. Mm -hmm. Feedback I have feed, feedback that I have received from co comments or his remarks at certain town meetings by the citizens, you know, maybe crossing the line a little bit with uh, giving advice or again, but this is not personal. So don't even go down that route, Bill, because I, I absolutely disagree with you. We are all professionals here, and this decision is based, has nothing sure. to do with. I mean, I'm speaking to myself. Actually, so, what decisions you know, does the board disagree with that that Cosgrove ha, ha, has given us advice? Excuse me for the clarification. He doesn't. He's never made a decision. Opinions. Well, so the reality is, if you don't like the decision, then instead of blaming the attorney, you should be blaming the town meeting voters. You should be blaming the board selectmen because they're the ones who take the action. Lee Cosgrove has never taken the voter in action. That's not what the attorney is paid to do. Any action you don't like is taken by a board or a town meeting vote. So to Bill's point, what piece of advice did you not like? There was a recommendation made, and again, I can't have to because I mm -hmm. no because of what has happened in the past to do something and take an action that would have been detrimental, and I think we all would have agreed. But again, I can't get into it because I know this is the whole thing. Correct, and my was interpretation a of that is the exact opposite. And to your point about comments, as, as many people who, for whatever reason, whether personal or process, would like to see a change, I can also guarantee you there are many residents of this town and, and employees who, who dealt with Attorney Cosgrove who absolutely think he's the, the best attorney we've ever had. 
You know, there are people who like me, there are people who hate me, people who will vote for me, people who will never vote for me. Same thing with an attorney. There are going to be people who are going to give you bad comments about an attorney and positive comments about an attorney. Has he ever misrepresented this town? No, he never has. No, I don't think anyone is saying he misrepresented this town. Again, well, again don't the get insinuation me has been tonight that he's done something wrong. The insinuation has been that he's given, he's, caught, he's taken poor actions on behalf of the town, which he doesn't know where it does. They acted our direction because town meetings directions. So there have been insinuations made tonight about actions that an attorney for the town has taken when they don't take actions unless told to do so. So you might like it or not, there's going to be there's a perception. In his in his new proposal that he just sent us, in Carson, is that less expensive than what we're paying now? Yes. Hmm? Yes. Yes. I, I, I Andrew, uh, correct me, but I believe in terms of uh, the retainer last year was seven grand. I think this year that on, uh, at least on the RFP was sixty. Um, right. What he provided was like a per hour basis, so between sixty five and one eighty. Correct. It was the retainer. It was a retainer, but we right. right now we do the per hour. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. So, I, I looking at the numbers, it, it would appear to me that based upon the retainer model, assuming the same number of hours billed last year, yeah. that it would be cheaper. Although, Madam Chair, to, to to your point, I don't know honestly if our discussion is going to can sway a, a, our 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 individual things at this point. I say so, honestly, I you know I say that we just move. Are you trying to move the question? Yes, that we, honestly. Right. This is one of those examples so we have, where, where like, right. we can talk forever, oh, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so, but having said that, is that everyone good with taking mm -hmm. taking the vote? So we have a motion in the second to retain attorney. Councilman Black. Black. Thank you. Uh, there's no further discussion. Hearing none, uh, but all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. So the motion passes. Three to two. We'll pick up again next year. And I would like to say something, uh, which is a thank you. Um, you know, we didn't all agree. But I, I've been on a lot of boards with a lot of different uh, personalities. And I, I'm very happy, actually, with the conversation we had. Even when we disagreed, everybody was polite and professional. It's the nicest I've ever heard you say to me. Oh, good. So, um, <laughs> Great. All right. So moving on to special town meeting closed warrant review draft of special town meeting. So we should have draft warrant. I'd like to thank the planning board specifically for uh, waiting for most of their uh, articles until October. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going on the month of three. <laughs> Andrew and Karen, three, yes. I mean, this it's all pretty straightforward. I mean, there's nothing, there's not, I mean, and the people at home, there's there's nothing on here that's at least outside of zoning. There might be some minor tweaks. We're, yeah. we're just looking for, for some guidance on the old type one, yeah. uh, whether or not we need to take that motion or not, because there was never, there was a trust document issue to the actuary back when uh, it was first passed, and now that they've got the municipal modernization, there's some discussion as to whether or not the trustee, which is the uh, treasurer collector, can just sign a new trust document and submit that for it because we're under a different uh, different uh, general law now that that whether or not that has to go before town meeting for adoption. So mm -hmm. we're just we're hammering that out. It's on there as a place for right now. So really the big argument or debate is going to be around article two around uh, free cash itemization once we find it. But Get the numbers, which I'm assuming we're going to have next Wednesday with things. Yeah, cool. that should be our. Yeah, so so outside of that, I mean, yeah, this is this is as innocuous as, as it can be for us. And just for the the public, the a reminder: the meeting is going to be the special town meeting is Tuesday, October thirteenth, twenty twenty. Oh my God, that's in November. I know, right? Wow. Yeah. More more to follow, and this will be on our. It's always on our website, right? The yes. Calendar. So if you want to, if you want to read it, feel free. Won't be up yet, not until well, you guys. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Don't to, don't look for tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so, Karen, through you, uh, yeah. I was looking just to, to 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 close the warrant and and uh, and approve. Probably just close the warrant. Yeah, I was gonna um, say, right. probably just approve it as yeah. your next regular. And yeah, discuss with finance. And so, motion to 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 officially close the warrant. Second. So 
would be not the right time to ask a question about one article. Oh, you can ask. But just what would be an article like? That is being Get out of place. okay. That's planning board. I believe that they want to amend the um, parking requirements for uh, commercial buildings. They, I think they were what they're looking at is like large um, distribution type facilities may overly spec their parking right now based off the current bylaws. So they're looking to amend that to. Be more in line with a large, <laughs> yeah, a large building with very few employees. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so we have a motion and second to close it. We can vote on the vote. <laughs> no other discussion. All right. All those in favor of closing the special town meeting more? Aye. 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 But wait, there's more. No, there's not. All right, so where are we? So where are we? Uh, All right, so I I don't know. We might need to unmute someone. So we have the Public Safety Building Capital Campaign Steering Committee. A quick report. Steve um, Coleman or Marie Smith, are you are you on? Unless Steve is named Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> he may be. Yeah. So I, I would not surprise me. All right. Um, All right. I'm not saying. I guess that's. Yeah, I just don't want to get it. Okay, I have it right here. So I, <laughs> I don't I printed it so I can actually read it. So I'll just give a quick update. Uh, obviously, tonight we had a donation from uh, Cornerstone Bank. Mm -hmm. And it was $2,500. So we thank that, thank them for that. Um, and that again was for the Charlton Public Safety Building. And but wait, there's more. So we also heard that we're going to be getting a donation from the Southbridge Credit Union. It's a total amount $5,000. So that'll be $2,500 over two years. So thank you to Southbridge Credit Union. But wait, there's more. <laughs> and I wish actually I like we'll, we'll see Hank soon, but um, Mossy Masonry. Has donated or is pledging to donate twenty five thousand dollars. Wow, who is that from? Hey. Wow. So to and that's in like one week. So that's um, awesome. I think that I think we're approaching. I think we're getting close to four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we think now. we can do the million by November third. Just saying, you know, and every dollar we raise helps to just less the yeah, right. as well. In so awesome. it's it will help the taxpayers. Uh, oh, and, and they're also we're also doing. A lot of outreach. We're organizing outreach just to any group, whether it's like a lake association, alliance group, uh, you name it. If you want information, um, we could do kind of the Zoom outreach kind of things. But you know, you can have tours. People, we want to know, you know, what your questions are so they can be answered. For whether it's a capital campaign question, whether it's um, uh, an actual, you know, a question about the plan itself. I know. Been doing a great job answering that, but it's you know, the finances we got it all, and of course, we got to put a plug in for the, the website, which yeah. is uh, some building, yeah, <laughs> I still put the spot. Come on. Come on. <laughs> 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 like from public safety building, <laughs> right? Everything you need to know is really there, but um, there's also contact information. You can submit questions, please ask. We thank you, and that's. I don't think yeah, right. I will give a shout out to Rob Barton, who's been yeah. incredibly active on social media. Like every time somebody posts something that may just say he posted erroneously, he steps in in a very kind and professional manner. He's not always nice to him. Correct. Yes. <laughs> he's being very patient and just giving factual information. So shout out to Rob. Yeah. And people understand. All right. Next. Uh, POS policy review. We don't have any, right? That's an easy one. Town Administrator Report, Andrew. Let me just describe my report because we can sort of just ongoing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, done. Same stuff as usual. You and argue. Yeah. <laughs> All right, other business unknown at uh, time of post. Uh, I got to look now. I don't want to talk about it. Right. Bill wants to have a poll here. Right. Then next meeting announcement. Uh, again, we have a joint meeting that, that we select board with FinCom on Wednesday, September 16th, 2020. 
We're going to finalize the special town meeting warrant articles at that time. Well, where is that going to be? That's a great oh, question. Uh, on Zoom, right? It would most yeah, likely be Zoom. Okay. It would most so, likely be Zoom meeting. Look for the Zoom link. I have no idea. Look for the Zoom link. And then, of course, our regular meeting is September 22nd. And then we just added the VM. Yeah, on the 15th, but we didn't save time. I mean, six. Yeah. Does that work for six, everybody? Mm -hmm. 15, six works, yes. I mean, I can do it any time. So and that's sure. specifically for? Only police chief interviews. Because you work on time the And potential, sure. Is that good? You, you I mean, that honestly, Patsy, we use six thirty. If it if it makes your life easier. Because I always say that I'm going to leave at a normal time. And so what? Yeah, I like to call you and tell you to get out of here. <laughs> no, honestly, seriously. <laughs> is 630 better for you? Yeah. Can you do 630? No, that's fine. Yeah, can do 630. Can I remember you're doing it? No, no, text Patsy at 530. The word leave now. So I can't go get it down now. Honestly, work, work always comes first. That's how it works. Work, work and family. All right. Good. And so next would be, all right. Sure, because we have I, an executive session. Bill, I know you yeah, want to. Sure. I would like to make a motion to go into executive session under MGL Chapter 38, Section 21A, number three, discuss grants and prospective collective bargaining and litigation. Uh, with an open meeting that has detrimental effect on the bargaining and litigation position of public body. The chair shall declare the meeting is open session. Wow. Chair, so okay. declare. Everyone be agreeing. No. I declare it is. Yes, we have to. All right. Um, we have to do this by roll call vote, Steve. Aye. Kathy? Aye. What's your name? David. Yep. <laughs> Bill? Aye. 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 We are now in executive session. Right. To everyone who watched tonight, thank you. We appreciate it. And um, <laughs> have a great evening. Bye, everybody. Bye, David.